know there's nothing like this, right? A lot of years. A lot of blood, a lot of heartache and that shit. I mean, I just want to say thank you for doing this first because, you know, it means a lot, not just to me, but fucking to a lot of people, whether, you know, whether you believe it or not, because I know you're a humble man, you too, but, you know, a lot of people still think of Coldest Life as one of the greatest, one of the hardest bands ever in hardcore. I tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, but we really just want to get into history about it. Well, I do anyway, just to know it's a little more like what kind of music was in your household growing up? Like what, what were you listening to or like your uh, mom or dad? And what was your influence at an early age? My pops and mom, fuck, they got divorced at like seven or eight. But I remember hearing Seeger, Bob Seeger on the radio, uh, Elvis. That's, that's that's putting my age on some shit but <laughs> yeah <clears throat> but Seeger I remember hearing Seeger a lot the Eagles you know what I mean old mm -hmm. old like just classic rock yeah yeah how about you man me all, all kinds of stuff but yeah a lot of Bob Seeger all my uncles you know he was from Michigan so yeah Bob Seeger was my dad's friend were down on that Ted Nugent fuck man you know shit, Fleetwood Mac like old Fleetwood Mac with Peter Green in it and shit mm-hmm you know, mm -hmm. yeah yeah I gotta get rid of this because the fuck. Ugh. Yeah, my uncle totally got me into. You know, he taught me how to use this big old stereo system because back then it was you know albums and it was reel to reel. That was, <laughs> that was big popular, you know. So he taught me how to use this whole stereo system at like the age of five. Damn, so man. I was cranking on that all the time. And actually, I had cassette tapes too. It just came out, so like I was recording albums on the tapes and things like that. Being on cool. drums and shit. No, I didn't have a drum set back then. When did the drums start? Uh. Around 12, 13, and right yeah. in there, 12, 13. Well, I got a drug rehab. I went to drug rehab. At up what there. age? Jeff Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> it was 84, 83, 84. Yeah, we were young, man. <laughs> Both of you at the same time? <laughs> well, close, close. Well, Not the same time. But. The deal was, they didn't want me to be on drugs and do all this. So I was like, well, get me a drum set. The school went out, bought me a drum set. So I got to jam it, you know, in between lunches and then. My mom bought me a drum set. That's fucking awesome. Went over to Jeff's house. I was like, hey, man, I want to get a band. <laughs> so so you guys known each other that long? Barely barely in middle school. Barely in middle school. Like, uh, So you said Wayne County before, but can you get a little more specific? Like, what city were you in? We were in Canton when Roy and I met. Canton? Yeah. Early years, like, so you said, what, 83, 84? Yeah. And, uh, what was your guys' first band? So when did you guys start? Well, like, were you in other bands before you joined the band together? No, it was Roy and I together from the beginning. Yeah. Well, there was other bands. Well, like I said, I got out of drug rehab, and he had got out of drug rehab prior to that, and I had heard of that. So we were like sober dogs. And, uh, you know, like I said, I was getting that drum set, so I went over his house, but I always heard about these guys being in trouble, him and his brothers and all that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, was, I just went over there and... Hey man, you got a guitar? He's like, yeah. I was like, I'm getting a drum set. He's like, well, cool. Bring it over as soon as you get it. I was like, all right. I think we made two songs that day. I brought it over, didn't we? Yeah, man. Yeah. He's like, I already knew how to play the drums or something. It was really weird. What were you guys playing? Were you like covering songs, or were you just making up your own shit at the time? Ah, uh, we made up our own. <laughs> well, from, from the get, there was yeah. some covers though. We did some GBH and. Yeah, we did some covers, some punk covers. Well, that no, at first, remember when we were with the Bears, was and all those guys, oh, shit. and uh, you know, we were doing more metal shit, Metallica, and, you know, shit like Slayer, that. Motorhead, Slayer. Yeah, we were doing you some know. Motorhead back then, yeah. fucking eighties. Yeah. Damn, we're old. 
Yeah. <laughs> Fucking eighties. So, 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 so sim- simpler, shit, simpler so time though. I tell you that. <laughs> What's up? Oh, it's a little bit closer, maybe. Yeah, but um, you know, because you guys had a, such a unique sound from the beginning. But I know, um, Coldest Life wasn't the first band, <clears throat> or even the Mattress Rats. What was up before that? Like, I know there's another band before that, right? Appetite Degenerates. Yeah. yeah. It was just you two and nobody else that ended up in Coldest Life, or. It was Jeff and I, and uh, Chris, Brian Bears and Weldon. Chris Weldon. Yeah, and I was actually playing bass. Oh. Brian Bears, who was on the drums, Jeff was playing guitar, and Chris Weldon was singing. <laughs> yeah. So there's been. And we actually played a show that Blondie was in that band. Appetite for Generals. Yeah. Blondies, did you guys headline or who was the over? We were, we were so we young, like, I think my mom drove us there, didn't she, or something like that? <laughs> there's an open I mean, stage. We young, I don't remember, man. Yeah. It's, it's years oh, ago. that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, so, so when did we start uh, Coldest Life? When you when we came up with the name and everything like that, who was in the band at the time? Roy and I were playing, and Jay Way, and we were looking for a singer and a bass player, and and Ron Beauty and uh, Robbie Graham, Jimmy Doom's little brother from ALD, uh, came out and tried out. And uh, Ron, Ron and us clicked immediately. Uh, Robbie Doom, we were a little much for him. He, he didn't want nothing to do with it. So Ron stuck around, Jimmy Doom, or uh, Robbie Doom split, and, uh, and we were called his life from then on. <sighs> No, actually, we were the match fest for a little while. Longer. Oh, we were, we were. Yeah, and then uh, with Ron, then we had a song called "Cold as Life." You know, because okay. Rat Bones would always Rat Bones wrote shit. it, yeah, spray yeah. painted all over that barbed wire house over yeah, the yeah. east side there. Yep. And, uh, I've heard the name. I've heard the yeah. name, but oh, he's yeah. great dude. Well before my time. Yeah. Uh, the only the only thing I've ever seen him on is that like four minute uh you know documentary thing that was on youtube him saying he said ron did something to somebody but his jaw was fucking hanging down here that's all there's a one second clip of him saying that but i was like i need to know more man uh, so so when you guys met up with him uh, did you already know who he was oh, yeah. i didn't who? i didn't ron, ron yeah uh well you know he used to beat everybody up at the shows before we knew him we knew that much of him, but, you just know he's a yeah, scrapper but... It was kind of weird like when he came over it was just like i don't know he never left after that he was just like all right frankly live my house son. yeah and, well uh, really here were people you know like, like stories and basically fucking legends because it happened so long ago um like him growing up was pretty tough like do you know that much about him or you know did they ever talk about not it prior to that you know because no, i just don't had a mohawk at a real young age yeah. you know <laughs> you just seen the pictures and shit it's like I just knew of him, you know. I, I we knew all of them. We didn't know him or anything like that. We just, you know, we knew of him because he used to beat a lot of people up. You know, well, you know some people are retel- What's the word? Uh, I've re- I give us a fuck. <laughs> you know, people know who he is. Um, it's based on the thing he does. Uh, he was, you know, he was cool after that. A good guy to everybody, but to his friends, you know, yeah. probably solid, right? Uh, you know, here and there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Might get your ass kicked. Like it, you know? <laughs> yeah, but, but just then he'd uh, take you out to McDonald's and say sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, because <laughs> like, that was well before my time, like '88. I was one year old in 1988, just so you know that. So that just puts into perspective. I have no idea about you guys. Um, it was a way different way of life back then, and like just the way things were. You, know, you could still be an outlaw back, back yeah, then, man. Exactly. You know, there wasn't cameras on every corner. There right. Were still things you could get away with. Yeah. Nowadays, good luck being an outlaw. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah, yeah. They got you on everything, yeah, everything. or unless somebody's recording you in the fucking corner, and then you end up on YouTube. Ten people recording you in the corner. So, the coldest life. Do you guys remember your first show? Like, that's what I want to know. I don't. You remember your first show? Like, um, as cold as life. As no. cold as life. I don't. Um. I want to say it was uh, probably that Latin Quarter show or somewhere around there that we played. Yeah, Fock Wolf. was playing, and Fock with 190. I mean, the a bunch Rogues. of punks, probably the Feisties. I don't know. A lot of bands were playing it. Latin Quarter, that was on the Boulevard. Yeah, I think there's a flyer out for a lot there of those is, shows. There is, So that was pretty much when the Colo's Life name was being used in, what, 90, 91, somewhere around there. Yeah. yeah. So how did you guys end up on the um, – Agnostic Front show. Was that your guys' first time to play with Agnostic Front? Um, somewhere in Flint, I remember. 
Yeah, Here's Souls in the Flint. Theater. You guys played Capitol Theater. Yeah. yeah. Is that when they uh, you know, discovered you guys? Hey, listen, man. Rap Bones was spray painting cold as life all over the fucking inside of this theater. It was a kind of a nice theater, man. It was kind of like the, the not the Fox Theater in Detroit, but it was a nice old venue. And this motherfucker was, had a can of spray paint. He was spray painting cold as life all over the place. And we never got paid because that's. Oh, Jesus. my God. Well, not only that, he was pissing off the, the stage shithead. on the whole crowd. But that, he was like <laughs> sitting off the stage. So, AF, yeah, this is the first time we ever met them or anything. They have just like, what the fuck is up with these guys? You what, know, like, yeah, you want to come to New York? But obviously they liked us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You, want to go to well, New York? So, yeah. you know, the chaos is what everybody you know enjoys about it. Just like hearing the crazy shit, which, you know, that's, I mean, I get, I get excited when I hear about the chaos of the shows and, you know, fights and fucking people acting crazy because, you know, it's, it's just part of the underground scene to me. It's, it's just what comes with it. Like you might end up with the black eye, but we had a good night, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, bad nights too. Fuck, man, a lot of them. A lot. I have a hard time with that right there, just because there's so many people in the ground, man, and so many people behind bars because of that shit. It's hard for me to glorify the chaos because there's so many people that lost their lives in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm talking about the fun at shows. Oh, it was, but, yeah, it was a blast. Right. Man. Where you end up with the time. black guy, you're like. Fuck, I had a good time during that set. I'm glad that band came through, you know. Shit happens, right? Yeah, that's a part of it. You know, the aggression. It ends up. Yeah, there was rarely black eyes, though. It was usually somebody missing an eye. Or, like, <laughs> well, yeah. Something, See, something that's little, so much. a little worse than a black eye. You know what I mean? I can do the good old-fashioned black eye is not anything, but when somebody gets their teeth knocked out with a batter of chunk <laughs> ah, in their face or something, it's, yeah. you know, it's a little more to it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. The eras are different. Like, like different place like there might have been a beat down here and there in like the early 2000s but you know well, back then there wasn't nobody coming to, to help you you know what i mean the cops wouldn't even come in some of the neighborhoods we were rolling in there was there was some things that happened where fucking cop helicopters were hovering over top of us man and fucking cops were standing there watching because they didn't know what to do because there was a hundred fucking people fighting <laughs> fuck man so were you guys like playing like out like squats and shit too? I know there's some around Detroit. We're just yeah. at the smaller parties, venues and yeah, stuff. Yeah, house parties. parties. Fuck, we did all that. Footprints on yeah. ceilings. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we used out. to throw big parties. Roy Stocks and all these. I, you you want to get to that? Fifteen hundred fucking people at one of them. That's what I wanted to get like to. Is the Roy shit. Stocks like blood for blood and shit? Without, yeah, that was like the fourth or fifth one. Yeah, blood for blood. So this is at a there. house? No, we we fucking were out in the middle of a field, dude. And I, we rented this PA dude that came in a semi truck that was like two thousand dollars. That is so like crazy. That. Was like pie knob over there it was fucking just a bunch of maniacs. Stage yeah, built it was with milk crates and shit. Yeah, yeah. we <laughs> built two stages. No, we had two fucking stages. We had bands playing all fucking day long. Endless amounts of beer. Fuck. Man, when was the first Roy stock? Oh, that was. That was Come on, that think back. Be... It's been a long time. I'm ashamed. That house. Up here. I lived in Belleville, and. uh Jay Way was still in the band, I think. It's early nineties, yeah. early mid nineties. You know, there's a video on YouTube. It's uh, Roy Stock. All it says is Roy Stock Belleville. I don't even know if it says the year, but I know. Um, I think it's when Blood for Blood played. Yeah, that was in Belleville too. Yeah. <laughs> just in the field somewhere. That yeah, was somewhere else. Yeah, just in the field. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck man, I really missed out on the good times. You know. But we should just make shit happen but like that. You know? We yeah. didn't rely on all the other, you know, corporate bullshit or anything. We just did it ourselves. I know, and you know, mm -hmm. fucking permission to do things and yeah. stuff like that's that. That's how we connected with all those guys, all at war, and all those guys. Those guys are awesome guys. You know? Yeah, and and it's not like yeah, like internet then either. Like oh no, there's all letters and shit. Yeah, like all letters like, and phone um, base phone. Yeah, like you had to use a phone. You know, like so was it just bands that were like passing through? You end up like such like opening for say like Agnostic Front. They were just on tour. Well, that would open the door, and then you would, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that agnostic front, I think, Demise, and fuck, I, I forget how many other bands played it, but I think Warzone was on the bill, and, and it just opened the doors, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then it was up to you with a handshake and look in the eye, hey, you want to come to Detroit? Yeah, you want to come to New York? And that's how it worked, you know what I mean? We'd do a weekend on the East Coast, they'd come out and do a weekend out here, and Communication was way different back then, you know. Like we were running out Pony Express back then, you know. Like we didn't have no phones or not, but everybody knew what the fuck was going on. You yeah. see flyers and like, you know, you'd be doing shit like that, or you'd go to the mall back then, the mall with the arcade and shit. Everybody hang out there. And Man, you'd go to like 
Heath Beach or some shit like that. Heath Beach. Yeah. Wow, is that even open anymore? <laughs> I don't know. But, That's you know, so, literally one of the shittiest sort of cool places, places in Michigan. Like that and, I'm a party zone, but. Like I said, if not that, I mean, my house was always a party house. Jeff's house was always a party house, and, you know. Yeah, my dad worked midnights. Yeah. And as soon as he hit the door, every, my house would fill up with fucking mohawks and leather bristle studs and acne. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Fuck, man. Yeah. So it was just was house shows all the time or? Yeah. Just, yeah. 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 And six, five, nine. And... We practiced all the time, though. Like we're always, you know, we, we always hammered down all the time. Yeah, like storage units. People kick us out of the house or whatever. Yes, I couldn't imagine but, like your neighbors, like you're just in the middle of Detroit, just uh, fucking blowing the place out. We like, stealing people. supplies for like the local places, like they were building places to like soundproof our rooms in the basement, shit. So uh, nobody, we wouldn't bother nobody. And then yeah. the, the locals would think we were like witches and yeah. shit. <laughs> and fucking white dudes with mohawks everywhere. And, and, and <laughs> witches. What the fuck is this shit? <clears throat> yeah, they didn't know how to take us. Yeah, and uh, there's one thing that uh, was already gone before um, I ended up at hardcore shows is having to fight uh, fight like like from Nazis. There's real, like, real like uh, white supremacists that were floating around those days, right? Like that's one thing that I never seen was like you know you hear about like Agnostic Front having to fight like the Nazis in like New York and shit like that. Was it like that around here too? Yeah. Like, yeah, there is a crew uh, it was in like Detroit about four called or five the, crews, actually. The, well, the the well, the the Apple Squids yeah. in uh, Pontiac side, area yeah. and the West Side Boot Boys in Detroit. Yeah. There was conflict all the time. Yeah, there, there was, was fucking Pecker Woods, Woods yeah. man, that would come around and try to push their push their weight around. But yeah, we would have to fight it to keep, to keep it the way we wanted it. It just depended on the show, whether yeah. they'd show up or not, or they're just fucking there all the time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Fuck. So, yeah, they like all labeled their crews. We just never. We were just all the bands that always hung together, you know. So we did have a lot of people with us, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. So, but we just never, you know, we weren't labeled as no Apple Center, no shit like that. Yeah. Also, one thing, uh, you know, like people know, you know, as a call this life to think of uh, CTYC. What I don't know is where did CTYC start? How did it start? Can you? Expand on that a little bit. Brother, like, oh, no, CTYC. No, 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 no. It was a fight at Blondie's, man. Is that what happened? We were fighting with who knows who we were fighting with, but Ron was screaming it. <laughs> Colder than you, crew, motherfuckers, as we were fighting with these people. Oh, that's right. Colder than you, crew, motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, that's how it started. All right, you're and then right. Dougie, and then yeah. afterwards, Dougie's like, yeah, man, CTYC, bitch. And, <laughs> the, the rest and it, is history, and it just, and it just stuck. Yeah, it just, it just I mean, stuck. That's the hardest shit, though. Like colder than you, crew. Like who says that? Like only cold as life would come up with some shit like that, man. <laughs> like some, you know, just some real OGs. You know, to me, anyway, and a lot of other people. Like I said, man. Like, like, like I can imagine just like going to like a show and just just imagine like what, like what's gonna happen tonight. At the coldest life show, like right. there's like Ron that's drinking, that's what we, you know, he's got his eye on someone who he didn't like in the crowd and shit. It, <laughs> that's what we wondered the same shit. Like, fuck, man, what's gonna happen tonight? I had a guitar case, I had a guitar case, man, that had an outline of an SKS in it because I would bring it to shows, and it, it made an outline in the case because you never knew. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, we'd sit in the guitar stands with the with in the boat. Your guitars. Damn, man. Yeah. So, well, between you guys, like, and like, so it's like touring. Like, when is the, the first time you guys had like a tour? Like, you went either to, uh, you know, a New York for the first time. Was that like well after you guys have already been established as Cold as Life, or was it pretty quick after the Agnostic Front show? You know, we were yeah. established for a while, and when we got asked, we we were surprised anybody knew us out there. Really, you know, we had gone out there a couple times, but. Madball asked us to come out and do that. Uh, uh, what was it? What record? Their record release party at, at CBGB's. But it was way before that. That was Agnostic Front supposedly last show at the time, the first one when we went out there, and that was right after that Flint show, kind of. Okay. You know, so, yeah, they wanted us, you know, and pretty much like yeah, so, you know, come out and play New York or whatever, and we played the CBGB show, which was probably the best show ever that we've ever played in our lives, you know. 
it was just intense dude. there's there would never be nothing like that ever again you know yeah, I lo- I've only seen videos of fucking CBG. And then it turned into the Mad Ball stuff and all that. We yeah, that's what, that's what he was asking, was, like yeah. when it started going into like touring and like actual touring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we so, did go there with Ron though the first time with the Agnostic. Fuck, front. How was Freddie nice, back then? It busted, it busted <laughs> into like hate read tours back when they were doing Under the Knife and mm-hmm. then yeah, yeah, so mid mid nineties. With uh, under the night it was like ninety five, ninety six, somewhere in there. Well, that yeah. was when yeah, you took over. You were starting to sing and yeah. all that shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was like ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, right after yeah, Ron got yeah, killed. Exactly. That's crazy. Like, it's hard to put it all together, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I know it's been a long. That's what I'm trying to we do. We partied our fucking asses off too. <laughs> that's a lot. Too, I, I forget so, you know. more than I remember. Really, it's been so many years ago. Yeah. Like, it's a kind of a blur. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm hoping. Just uh. You know, like, uh, you have your brain upload ago, some of the information uh, from fucking 30 years ago, you yeah, know, because I was 30. Thank you. It's been a little long. Well, you know, <laughs> what I'm saying you like 90s, like <laughs> early 1990 or so, like before, uh, you know, Ron got shot, which, which, like, why did he get shot? Like, do you, like, you know, just over some bullshit? Like, do you guys even Listen, know? Listen, people were afraid of even... Ron. So when some when 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 there's a guy, man, that does the things that Ron would do, you know, when there's somebody that'll kick the fuck out of you, and then people, people are afraid. People are afraid of that. Him. Not quit. People you are afraid never, of the you people would never like quit that. Ever that guy, you know. So it's like, and that's even being his friend. It's like fuck. Dude, <laughs> like just know? come fuck yeah, with you guys just because. Yeah, he was just that kind of guy. Did you ever have to fight him? He was a I drunken night. You I had was, to fight I him. I fought him a couple times. He's like, stop, Ron. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> well, he was beating up on a girl that I cared about. And, you know, yeah, you had to fight Ron. Whether you were his friend or not, yeah, you exactly. would have You'd to fight, fight Ron. Otherwise, you wouldn't even have Yeah. You. But, you know, just from you knowing, you know, as little as I do, just, you know, the life he lived, like early days, like, you know, was there any, any right from wrong with him growing up? Oh, he knew right from wrong. Yeah. He, so it, it, if you got into it, man, he would always apologize, man. But in the heat of the moment, man, you were fighting. Yeah, he would. He would like Roy said. He'd buy you a cheeseburger afterwards, <laughs> man. But <laughs> oh, you, you know, uh, all fucked up. Bro. Yeah. So hanging out with Ron, <clears throat> you never knew what was going to happen, and people stopped hanging out with Ron because whenever you did. It was trouble, man. Not like the the good old fashioned American black eye trouble. There was fucking trouble. And uh, I kind of was distancing myself from him, and he uh, he wanted to go out. It was Fourth of July. We want he wanted to go to Hart Plaza. I didn't want to go. Right? He wanted to go to Hart Plaza. I didn't want to go. He finally talked me into going down there. I promise you, Jeff. I promise you, it's going to be good. I'm not. You know, I'm good. I'm not going to do nothing. Right? So I go down there with him, man. And uh, he had three mohawks. Right? They're bright pink. And we're walking through Hart Plaza. Which is trouble in that era. Oh, yeah, yeah, at yeah. that time. In that era. Trihawk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Got nails coming exactly. through his leather. And, you know, the oh, trouble way to have patches on his back. Or, you know what I mean? Vice <laughs> squad patches mm-hmm. on his leather. And we're walking around and all the jocks are fucking, fucking blah, blah, blah. Right? And he's passing every one of them by. Gee, I told you everything's good. Everything's good. Right? Well, this cop on a fucking horse. Says some shit, spouts some shit up, and this motherfucker's yanking this fucking Wayne County Sheriff off his fucking horse and fighting with him. Jesus Christ. Like, fuck, man. You know, you <laughs> just know, dragging you know, everybody that's, down. Uh, that's the, <laughs> yeah, you just never knew, yeah. man. That's back when shit was really dangerous, still. It's a different city now. A different yeah. era. Yeah. Different, different times, yeah. man. For sure, nothing like that no more. No, yeah. I mean, even. It's all sugar coated, candy coated. Yeah. The last, the last Computer time I type stuff nowadays, you know. Hey, the last no, crew no fight after school at the fucking schoolyard. No yeah, more. You know what I'm then you get arrested. Before you had to pay your price, you know. Oh yeah, you're talking shit. Well, guess what? You're beaten after school. You know, there ain't no hiding behind the bullshit no more. You know? I think the last crew, the last <laughs> band, the last era that music was dangerous in this city anyway was when Dave Hayes and Tyrant. They, those were kids that would jump on a table and kick mm-hmm. a motherfucker in the mouth to stand for what they believed in. Fuck but yeah. after that, after Cold is Life, after Tyrant, it's just a different era now, man. Where people actually stood up and fought, like literally fought, no for matter what, what it cost, in. for what they believed in. Yeah, right around that whole era of change, around 2000. Right or wrong, too. Around 2000. Right wrong. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, if you don't fight for something, man, then, yeah. I mean. If you believe in it. Might as well fight for it. Yeah, man. 
It seemed like it all changed when all the computers and all the thing came into play. Yeah. Just well, life kind of changed. I mean, for some people's sake, just Stop. before the s- that was right smartphones showed up. You know? It's where the smartphones showed up. Record yeah. everybody. Yeah. We're all in trouble, you know. We are. We're all in trouble now. <laughs> It'd be even worse trouble, no. So imagine if there's fucking cameras back in the 90s, you know, with all the shit they have. Everybody in their fucking phone in your face, man. Well, we'd all be in prison for it, life. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Like life, for real. I believe it. <laughs> like some shit, you know, that just happened to happen when I was around, you know, the early 2000s. Like, Oops, good thing there was no well, smart you ain't getting away from none of it no more. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know. Well, I'm just the guy standing in the back now, minding my business. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you haven't even been able to go to a you. show. You know, no, yeah. I've been gone for almost a decade. I know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you got out with all this shit and yeah. haven't even been able to go to like a good show. No. Nope. What the fuck? Yeah, it'll happen. It'll yeah. Happen. One, one of these days. <laughs> one of these days, one I hope. One of these days. Everybody playing a good show? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, I'd love to hear about it, you know, whenever you can talk about it. What's up? He said you may be playing a good show. Oh, nah, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be fun to fucking have a show. Um, Regardless of what we're doing, you know, <laughs> whether it be, you know, whatever. So now that, you know, we got, we talk about Ron and, you know, him getting fucking basically assassinated in his sleep, right? Like, yeah, man. Yeah, they, uh, they he was found with three bullet holes behind his ear from a thirty eight and a half dollar size pattern. So he was definitely in his sleep. He was in his boxers. He stayed he was renting a room at the Macombo at Livernois in ninety four with uh with Rich Worstein. A couple of days before it happened, uh Ron had Ron had mentioned that uh that he was nervous, man, because uh, Rich was on the phone. His roommate was on the phone, or no, so, there was pay phones back then. Again, <laughs> again man, yeah. there was no yeah, cell phones, yeah. and there were some dealers at that intersection that had this phone locked down. And he was on the phone, and somebody beasted the phone off him, and there was some kind of altercation. And Ron got into it, and Rich got into it, and whoever else was there got into it a little bit. And Ron told me he was a little bit nervous about what had happened. Well, that Rich was in a bunch of those gangs and shit over yeah, there yeah. anyway, so yeah. you know, who knows? And was he into like hardcore uh, and shit, like Rich, or was he just uh, just a roommate? Like was um, he? He, 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 he was came. A to, he Ron's, came to shows, actually, but yeah. he. I mean, I wouldn't yeah. call him like. He was always kind of a weirdo, man. (laughs) He knew who he was. Yeah, he. I mean, he came around. Yeah, Yeah, he was. He came to shows, Mm -hmm. but you know what I mean. He wasn't one of us. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, I mean, just by looking at that one picture I've ever seen, he doesn't look like one he is. He was. You know, know, it's fucked up shit that happened to him. Like, uh, you know, like what's fucked up is he bonded out, man, on a murder charge, and he's just been gone ever since. He bonded on a murder charge. How do you do that? That place has gone to where I was. I got knocked yeah, down. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, the weird thing six, was five, Jake died six, right five, down nine. the street from him. I had to go. Get six the five car nine's from gone too. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. It is. That's address where you guys stayed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it was in the yeah. corridor yeah. back when there was a corridor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now it's yeah, it was crazy. Well, now it's with record stores and fucking mil- paintings. Million dollar homes. Yeah. <laughs> and hairy armpits on chicks. <laughs> That's what it, I'm not lying. No, I, I fucking hipsters and just run the shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, fuck. So sell it back in like the cast corridor. That's where he got smoked at down there. No, he no? was at 94 in uh, Livernois on just the beginning of the southwest side. Okay, yeah, yeah, right there before it gets a little more hood. Yeah, from the southwest area. Yeah, it's a little north to southwest, but mm-hmm. it's kind of. Kind of right off 94 and... It's right at 94 yeah, in Livernois. There's a gas station that was at the very first street south of 94 at the nor- uh, southwest corner, right behind a gas station. There was a bar called the Macombo, and upstairs they rented a little loft. Damn, man. And well, you guys just found out like the next day or... Yeah, well, next day or something. That's what hit you up. It's a long fucking time ago. Hard to remember that. Was somewhere years. right in there. The next day yeah, or a couple fuck, days. Twenty-seven years. Jesus Christ. Yeah. You know. And that was what ninety-three. Yeah, ninety-three. I was six years old. Trying to do the math here. You know, you guys are. I was twenty-three. Yeah, twenty-three. Yeah. I was about twenty-two, twenty-one, something like that. Yeah. 
clowns suck. You need to fucking deal with this shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a little older, to be honest. Yeah. No, but like Yeah, but we still look pretty damn good for being as old as we are. <laughs> well, I mean uh, so so like at that age, I was twenty one when like one of my good friends died. Um he fucking overdosed on some shit. So so that's about the same age of twenty three, twenty two, twenty one and so that shit hits hard, but it's a little different. Some of the well, friends getting murdered. It's fucked just up. Ron, you know, you got Jake, you got Johnny, yeah. Timmy. You know, you got Timmy. Yeah, Dude, man. Listen, man, like there was there Everybody was in the band for a while. He died, you know. Roy and I had always been part of Cold's life from the beginning, right? Well, but there, but there's, but there's a handful of mainstays. Four of them dudes are fucking dead and gone, from oh, just crashing and burning, OD, murder, whatever it is, man. But four of us are are dead and gone that's just not ron it's, it's johnny it's yeah. jake and johnny was a big part of that era you know yeah jake he was. was a big part of that era johnny played on born to land hard yeah yeah well, um, that he wrote half that declination dude he wrote a lot of those riffs on that shit and, yeah. you know he was just he was a madman dude that's he couldn't shit. play it in the studio probably but you know <laughs> he'd write it you know yeah fuck and that was a good Good shit in that album too, uh, for Declination or whatever. Um, it's horrible production. But... The material, the material, material, was, different, the material was right. The material but the, was, was right. Good. Yeah, I don't think the the production came out yeah. all that good. But... Yeah, I think you sounded way different on some of those. You sounded way meaner. I mean, it sounds crazy either way. But I thought for Declination was, if it would have been done right, it would have been a lot <laughs> better. Yeah, absolutely. But we were there was some shit going on, some deep shit going on, mm -hmm. and we just couldn't get past it. And we were trying to get this done, and we had a couple fail attempts. And you know, we were, we were at a point where we had to produce something, or we were going to be contractually in trouble. Not contractually, yeah, but we, we yeah, right. We just we had to produce something. Well, I still thought it was good. And another thing, I listened to a, a podcast that. Uh, White Trash Rob had done. I forgot uh, the podcast that he did. This was a couple years ago, but he mentioned a show which uh, stuck out to me that was in uh, Chicago sometime. I, oh, I'm most positive he mentioned to you guys. It oh, was yeah. like a Victory Records showcase or something. Yeah, 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 it was. So, some crazy shit happened. It did. It did. You remember any of that? I like, I remember him saying I it was just a like crazy, it was crazy, crazy fucking thing happened. You right? I remember. I remember a little bit of it, yeah. I remember the whole thing. What happened, man? Like, so we, oh, was it a band had, playing or was it over everything? Uh, we didn't blood, even get to play. No, we didn't get to play. But it was us, hate breed, blood, blood for blood. Blood, blood. blood yeah. for blood was on stage, and uh, Gina, they had a, Gina was playing bass for him at the time. It was before Ian McFarland, and uh, she was swinging her bass like a fucking samurai sword, bashing people, and <laughs> uh, somebody had thrown a bottle in the crowd. And it went by the person they were throwing. It was a 40 ounce bottle. It went by the person they were throwing at. And I think Shabo and uh, uh, Shabo was bouncing, was was running security for the guys at the time. And it, and it hit them. And it was a mess. They were touring in a Crown Vic. They had heads <laughs> and guitars shit. in the trunk. <laughs> they were using cabs everywhere they went. And uh, we liked Blood for Blood so much. We were like, we, we, we didn't know them personally at the time, but we were like, fuck yeah, this is real deal shit. And real recognizes real. So, Hell yeah. so we jumped in with them. They were fighting the whole club, the whole the whole scene. So we jumped in with them and we were banging, banging out all the way out the door, got them into their cars. We got into ours. People were robbing Tony Victory, shoving, <laughs> shoving, shoving yeah. records in your coats. Everybody was doing that shit. Oh, yeah. Like, hey, hey, this and well, Tony, Johnny said something. Tony, Johnny Tony talked Victory. about or something. Yeah, Tony uh, Rummel from Victory asked us, do you guys want to do some records? Our, our guitar player, Johnny Haight, says, fuck you. Or, I forget exactly what he told him, but it was great. <laughs> well, it was we had this kid from uh, Germany or somewhere that remember got in the van with us. He was supposed to go on the rest of the tour with us, wherever the fuck we're going. He was just a little redheaded kid from and i i met him back over there a couple times actually i forget his name but uh and he gets in the van he thinks she's going on tour with cole's life and johnny's sitting in the back seat he's like come here pull your fucking pants off <laughs> and this like kid was all scared he's like i said pull your fucking pants off and like kid was out of the fucking van within two seconds dude oh yeah, fuck. That, his little tour to trip didn't happen because <laughs> <laughs> made him nervous uh, as, that was as a good usual. that was a fun night though we didn't get to play but that was a fun night God, it was chaos it was in a basement we had to fight our way all the way out the door oh my <laughs> god man like it's just not like that anymore 
It's no, not, I know. It's not the same. Like, when's the last time you? It's not dangerous no more. Well, it was hardcore. You know, hard. People could try and fake it nowadays, I guess, but you know, <laughs> you got to have you know the roots of it. You know. I like it. Yeah, where you guys really carried it on, you know, from you know uh, the uh, negative approach days and stuff like that. You know, there's really nothing like that. Well, that's Great what band. we were into. Great you know, band. that's yeah. what got us into it. Listen yeah. to them guys. Yeah, so, so like, they were oh, like, yeah, uh, yeah we, we were, like we were, they were a huge influence yeah, on us. Man. Absolutely, negative yeah. approach was a huge yeah. influence on on Cold as Life. So were you guys like going to the, like the freezer and stuff, or was that? I've been to the freezer. Yeah, bookies yeah. and you just hear about those times. Yeah, Marquee and yeah, four hundred four Willis it was a DIY place in the corridor. You know what I mean? It was it was it was different back then. Yeah, all the after hours clubs and shit. Oh yeah, the bank. Oh yeah, the, the bank. Red door. Don't you steal from me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah! I the mean, stuff. you know, it's never even like that for me. There's always like the, venues hey, established. The red door. Yeah. The red door. Oh, yeah, trouble. D Zach and Major running security there. Jeez. John Page. Yeah. Hey boy, want a gun? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a hell of a time, you know. Where there's no rules then, and just fucking. Just whatever happened, happened. Yeah, cops weren't showing up then in Detroit. Detroit, right? cops Detroit weren't showing was up, like right? a ghost no, town down there. It didn't was want to come. crazy, dude. Cops, there were no cops around. You could run red lights, do whatever the fuck you wanted to do. Dude. Listen, when we were when we were kids, when this shit was just starting, we were like 14 and 15 years old, and you would rob, steal, and f- scrape changes out from couch cushions and fucking bring it to the bar and dump six dollars on the on the bar and get a pitcher of beer. That's how that's how it was. Like that, we'd be stealing Jeff's old man's car since he was like working midnights over there. Yeah, the we old would, thunder chicken over there. Yeah, we would steal my dad's car yeah. or motorcycle or whatever we had yeah, to do to get motorcycle. to where we needed to get to <laughs> at fourteen years old. We would ride three deep on a on a motorcycle. Oh we had my to. god! And you're coming from uh, Canton at the time still, or what? Yeah, we were out in Canton then. So yeah. that's what a good. It's about a good about twenty minute ride on a. F- a fucking motorcycle with three people. It was fast motorcycle. We get there <laughs> quick. That's insane, man. That's a fun old time. Man. Yeah. I'm surprised we made it. Yeah. Most, so, of, most of us didn't. Yeah, yeah. And that's you. I remember uh, Johnny Hayton just he passed away. What year it was like? Oh three, oh four, something like that. <laughs> remember? Oh, you know he lived right over here too. Yeah, Park no, Street, right? No, it was. No? Yeah, he was on Park. No, yeah. White Street. White Street. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think it was more like seven, wasn't it? Like well, 2007 or something. Johnny got with us in because I just started. And I just started with Ramallah. Yeah, no, Johnny got with us when. Uh, um, no, he's Jake saying left. when he died. Oh, when he died. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, you say the only reason I'm bringing it up. <laughs> it was like 2007 no ish. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I had a friend who f- lived next door to him, and like he just said, yeah, like Johnny Hate from Cold as Life. I was like, I know Cold as Life. I like that band. And uh, he's like, yeah, the fucking uh, guitarist. I don't think he was a guitarist at the time, was he? No, that was just way before. Like, Johnny, 2006, 2007. Were you guys even? No, he was playing with Cold as Life. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like, Cold as Life away. actually wasn't even playing in 2007. You had you had taken some time off, and I was doing Ramallah at the time. But he had been in Cold as Life right. prior yeah, to that. He got yeah. kind of crazy. That's when things started going bad for him. Yeah, yeah. Which is, I remember yeah. one of my good friends lived next door to him. And he's like, he fucking passed away. I was like, motherfucker. Yeah. You know, I was like, it was only a matter. Had of time. A he has like another yeah, one. He, he, he had like Cold as Life. <laughs> a lot of people died. Yeah. You know, so I was like, fuck. You know, another Cold as Life member who passed. Yeah. It's just crazy to think. Well, he, the dude would fucking take a handful of Xanax and wash it down with a half gallon of Jim Beam and Ooh. be blowing bubbles in a fucking uh, mud puddle, man, uh. and getting airlifted to hospitals every other fucking day. <laughs> yeah, he was a fucking savage. Yeah, man. Yeah, Fuck. He was. It happens. Like, well, he was a good guy, gets I love Johnny, man. I, I miss too. Johnny. You know? I do, too. I'll yeah. tell you what. Yeah. If you have a sick sense of humor, there was nobody funnier oh. than that motherfucker. <laughs> but he was actually really smart as well, though. He like, was. If you get him one-on-one. I don't know, I think he had social anxiety problems or something. He did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because at that time. Which I'm not trying to make fun of. I'm nah, just saying, yeah. I think he did have nah. something like that going Anybody on. that knows uh, him would agree. Uh, yeah. He, that, he, he, he'd sit there and try to fucking levitate. He's like, what are you doing, dude? Fucking trying to levitate. Just trying. Anything that was normal, he'd be the opposite of. Yeah. Yeah. 
the, the five of us could be looking at one thing in a room, <laughs> and we'd all see the same thing. And this motherfucker would come up with ten different things that nobody saw. Absolutely, he was a he was an odd odd fella. Smart yeah. fella. Hell yeah, yeah. Well, because when I showed up, you know, like, like I started going to shows like oh three oh four. Um, I think was it just Hate Inc at that time, or was uh, I don't think Cold as Life was even doing anything like say oh four. Well, I never got to see so Roy, Cold when, as Life. When, I seen other ones. If Roy wasn't but, doing something, and I wasn't doing something. Cold as Life wasn't doing something. It, the, only, Cold, the only time Cold as Life was ever doing anything was when Roy had it going on, or I had it going mm-hmm. on, or t- together we had it going on. Right. So again, I forget chronological order and years yeah, and, and all years that. And but all that, yeah, it just blends, man. Mind. But yeah, I I think two thousand two to. 2006 or 7 called his life wasn't doing anything but. yeah because you were in Ramallah yeah. and Hate yeah. Inc at the same time or was it just one or the other uh, I was in and out of Hate Inc yeah just yeah. like I was too yeah <laughs> yeah I've seen like I said but I mean we started that that was like the side project you know with Tom oh yeah, yeah. Mike, yeah. Mike Richards I mean? yeah. great band yeah. Mike Richards yeah yeah uh, like I said, I only got to see you in Hey Inc. and Ramallah. I never seen fucking Cold as Life. Just you know, right. I just wasn't around then, unfortunately. But uh, like, sucks for me. That's <laughs> 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 what I can say. Uh, it might be on YouTube or something. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's not the There's same. There's a lot of old videos going out there. Look, hey, we got boxes of a lot of old videos that are getting ready to come. So, I, I uh, hope. I, I hope yeah. they end up there because I've only never seen, been seen before either. So I've only seen a few good. videos at the Magic Stick before they even had oh, barely some, walls some, up at that place. Some of the place, best man. shows we ever did were oh, at yeah. that place, man. Yeah. yeah, some of the best shows we ever did. It's a different place now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, fuck yeah. It's a fucking techno shop, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, somebody I'm uh, I spend a lot of time with, man, um, was the talent buyer for that place, and she tells me all the time what a different. I've not been there since I got out of prison. I've not been there in probably 12 years. Wow. Partly because of my situation, but you know, uh, yeah, she, it's just a different, different place. It is like, uh, the stage isn't even a corner anymore. It's like in the middle, there's crazy lights and shit. Like I remember when you had to watch out for like bar stools, like tables being fucking yeah, thrown. Man. Mace, yeah. Somebody shooting up behind one of those fans and a <laughs> bottle of Mason. Oh, watching, I know. Watching, it covers watching, everybody. But he just part like the Red Sea. Oh, fuck, man. Yeah. The place isn't what it used to be. It's still fun. Uh, last time I was there, it seems so long ago, was uh, 2019 uh, Madball played there. And like, that was like the last, one of the last shows I went to just because the whole pandemic thing happened like right after. And, I was like, this is fucking crazy to be here. And it's not even, you know, the stage is in the corner. or in the middle now. It used to be in the corner. There's lights and shit, which they really update, which is a good thing. I mean, but it's just not the same. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Let's take a breath for a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. It's covered in Keith. <laughs> Set me free. Yeah, it tastes way better. Mushroom. You do all right. This is cool. <laughs> all right. Good. It's gonna appreciate it. Um, pass that back that way. Another thing I once heard about, <laughs> which I don't know if you remember, like you said, you played a lot of fucking shows. Is I wrote it down so I want to forget. In uh, Holland, you guys played a show in Holland. Maybe one time, like a, like a fight might have happened on stage between a couple of band members. Oh. I heard somebody mention that one time, and I thought, I, was oh, like, yeah, oh, gosh, yeah, I want yeah. to ask him about it. So uh, it, it, it all had to do with Johnny, man. We, <laughs> uh, Like I said, man, he was eating a lot of Xanax and getting fucked up. So this is our first tour in Europe. This our first is our show. first time coming out of Detroit, man. There's a bunch of hungry fucking kids, man, playing in hardcore band, dumpy-ass venues. And we're on, we're on – this is our first tour, very first show. It's Marauders playing – Fucking, Shit. there's a, a, the lineups, all star lineup, right? And uh, and we go to start playing, and we're playing, and this motherfucker washed a handful of Xanax down and washed it down with the fucking half or half gallon of Jim Beam, and all of a sudden his fucking guitar is on the ground with all this fucking feedback and <laughs> all the, he can't tune his guitar. So I walked over and I turned down his amp, right? 
and I could see him. He picked his guitar up, and I could see him. We're trying to play a set, man. It's our first show in Europe. And we warned him before he even yeah, fucking got yeah, there. Like, yeah. dude, you go fucking this shit up for us. You're getting your ass kicked, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. So he was warned. So it wasn't like... Yeah. It's almost like he did it on purpose. So I turned his amp all the way down, and Big Dog's carrying the guitars, and, and we're doing our thing. And uh, I see him over at his amp, and he's trying to figure figure everything out he can't figure it out well he finally figures out that his shit's turned down so he fucking he says to 11 right <laughs> just fucking just fucking everything up man and i was pissed man so i fucking bashed him with a microphone and kicked him off the stage and knocked his shit over kicked his amps over and fuck man what year was this just so i know like what album was out 99. there 99 okay yeah, so it was a born to land hard era yeah. 99 yeah and we were like kind of through dude we were like waiting for that hey European listen man for a long time, I, I, we, were, we were we were so i ran out to the bus man and i grabbed his luggage and i peeled it open and there was like 17 different prescription bottles in there mm. and i grabbed scooped them all up right and i went out in this alleyway in europe and fucking just started heaving his prescriptions in every direction i could man on roofs and fucking down gutters and he just threw him everywhere and he came out. Well, the thing was, he, he said, smuggled all that he shit said, in, dude. Hey, yeah, he, he smuggled, smuggled all that in. shit in oh, through, like, deodorant bottles. Yeah, yeah. And he got pulled over. Like, as soon as we were getting off the plane, they were, like, fucking pulling that guy over. <laughs> he didn't get busted, dude. Yeah, he never that's got crazy. busted. That's yeah. crazy as fuck. He came out as I'm throwing this shit all over the place. He said, dude, that's my fucking heart medication, and that's my this, and that's my that. Think of it now. You probably, like, that probably could have killed him, dude, because, like, those Xanax nowadays. Listen, like, this motherfucker those, called an ambulance. Yeah. Sisters, you know? He called an ambulance on himself, Good. and he and he said, I'm going to fucking die. Oh, oh, no, this was a different <laughs> tour. That's when Timmy was with us. Did I tell you these motherfuckers, man, called amp guy took the fucking pills again, man. And they called ambulances on this. <laughs> I hear all this commotion in the hallway, this hotel, and I open the door, and fucking Timmy and Johnny are in gurneys, strapped down to gurneys, and they're going out. And Timmy looks and he's like, I just want a fucking cheeseburger, man. <laughs> These motherfuckers, man, wanted codeine. And, <laughs> oh, man, it was a fucking nightmare. It sounds like it, but I just want a fucking cheeseburger, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, drugs are fucked. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's just interesting. Oh, yeah. You know, the song called his life, the name called his life. So much drugs involved, which is the song called his life. Like, shouldn't do drugs. You're right. <laughs> I've always been against hard drugs. Man. Yeah. And oh yeah. I, I'm I'm standing here pretty ashamed of this, the 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 road I've traveled because of it. You know, I got hurt in a work accident. I got spun on pain pills. And yeah. Roy will tell you, anybody that that knows me will tell you, man. I've always been against hard drugs. You know, I've always smoked we some. Were, weed. Yeah. I've yeah, always smoked some yeah. weed. Mm-hmm. Always drank some beers or whatever. I'm not straight edge by yeah. any stretch of the imagination, that but that, no, hard, that hard drug shit. I've always been against it, but I got <laughs> I got spun on pain pills and that yeah. transition from fucking. They did it to you though. I mean, well, I had a hand in it too, but, but yeah, the doctors like, yeah, definitely prescribe shit irresponsibly. Eat more, eat more, eat more. Yeah, try yes. this, try that, try it's this. It's easy that. to get you. Man. That's the epidemic right there. When you just, just end up COVID nineteen, yeah. The epidemic is all these pharmaceutical yeah. motherfuckers, and you know, getting everybody hooked on all this shit, and then they'll fucking take you off, yeah. and then where do they go? They're already hooked on it. They go to the fucking streets, yeah. and then hey, not everybody the that really does really like a opiate, a painkiller because of a surgery, ends up doing heroin, right? But every fucking buddy that does heroin started with pills. It's just the, the, yeah. the transition from legally yeah. prescribed yeah. medications to fucking illicit yeah. street drugs. Or you like Vicodin every seamless. now and again. And then they take and the Vicodin seamless. away. And then what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. Which they did. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because even, you know, over the past maybe like five or six years, I've lost more friends than I have in like my like teens and like early 20s. Yeah, like man. since I've been I like just lost like my 30. daughter, man, in June. So many my, people. My, my firstborn daughter OD'd and died. Yeah, fentanyl, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. I, ju- I just got out of prison and she died. Thanks, bro. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, me I, too, man. I couldn't imagine that. That was tragic as fuck. Oh, she was a beautiful girl, dude. Yeah. yeah. Like, just had a son. He's he's gonna be two next week. Yeah, she was a beautiful girl. Yeah. Well, I mean, at least you got to see her a little bit, right? You got to see her early when you were out, or yeah, for a month or two. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Fucking rest in peace. I mean, we've all lost yes. a lot of people, so yeah. you know. 
and we're gonna lose a lot more. Oh, yeah, and we're yeah. gonna be gone ourselves here soon, you know. So it's all part of life, man. You know, things gotta. That's why tough. you gotta go out righteous, you know? right? Yeah, just fucking yeah, you know. make decisions we make matter, man. Yeah, exactly, they make they matter. I know, especially you know, not just for us, but you know, for the ones hey, we dude. love, well, especially for you. Yeah, I mean, you guys are young now too, you know, so you gotta take these things, you know, mm-hmm. not got worry the... when you're fucking forty and fifty, you know. A heart of lessons, you know. Hey, be, be, before us is life and death, man. Mm-hmm. Choose carefully, cause you live or you die. That's it. Yeah, some people just fucking skate by, which some should yeah, be yeah. dead, yeah, and that's others, true. that's true. You know, went too early. You know. Yeah. Fuck. Well, you know, as we move on, you know, this is part of it. You know, it for, for, for life, yeah. death, and. Yep. You know, but uh, and taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a way to fucking yeah. put it. Like you're forced, but so got through. You know, born to land hard. You guys toured with all that shit. Declination, breaking up. Went through a lot of it, um, but we got to get with uh Dominic, who's now yeah man doing yeah. what for you guys? Damn. What's he doing? Oh man, he uh. Well, we got a lot of stuff going on, but right now we done a, we did a little run of merch, and uh, he's remixed and uh, remastered "Born to Land Hard," putting out on vinyl, disc, uh, digital release. Uh, he's doing a lot of stuff, man. He's re- repackaged it, fucking touched Good. it up. All right, well. Let's end it here, and we'll fucking All right, with him. Dom, I think he said three nine right now. What's yeah. up, man? So he's probably get him in here. How you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? Good, not too bad. Just uh, sitting here with your boys here. Uh, we're all appreciative that you're willing to you put in the time and energy into uh, remastering and putting out uh, "Born to Land Hard" again. Ah, uh, dude, it's an honor and a privilege. I'm excited as well. It's gonna be. It's it's it came out awesome. I mean, we've the three of us have heard how it sounds. It sounds it sounds really really good. So I think everyone's in for a treat. Good. I listened to it on my bullshit uh, record player. <laughs> oh, nice. It amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I was very happy. Yeah, so I mean, you know, but you started up your record label again. Uh, was this just a specifically for this, or were you just planning on doing it anyway? And this just happened to fall in line with uh, your plans and just panned out to. Not even joking. It was specifically because of this. <laughs> it was literally <laughs> when uh, the demos LP came out in Europe. I just wanted to make sure if someone was going to do. I figured someone someone doing Born Land Hard was going to end up being on the table, and I was like, ah, you know what? I just didn't want it to be. I want it to be the best possible thing that it could be, you know, no disrespect to anyone else that did anything and how they did it, but I wanted to do it my way and make sure, you know, it just presented the best way possible. I think uh, people are going to be pretty happy when they see like the layout that we came up with and stuff. It's, it encompasses all the original material. It's like real fresh and crisp. And I, I think people are going to be stoked. Yeah. Well, but yeah, to answer your question, this was the record that broke me out of retirement. I remember sitting there, I'm like, if they say yes, then I'm in. If not, then I'm just going to, not even worry about it and they said yes so it all worked out <laughs> yeah well there's a lot of people that are really looking forward to it and thanks to you you know we could all have it you know since everything's fucking digital these days uh you know it just pans out that it's just easier to access you know well that too it's gonna be cool because uh with the record coming out on, on vinyl it'll be out on cd again as well and and a limited cassette but uh it'll also be streaming for the first time so for the people that like listening to music that way they're gonna have the option to finally hear the coldest life records digitally it'd be cool is that weird jeff that they make fucking cassettes now that i don't think they were they were making out cassettes back before you went you know went away now they're making them again you know everyone's collecting them how awesome is that that's great (laughs) it's good to hear whether they listen to them is a different story i think they just looked it's like a affordable option to buy something cool it's got the packaging and you can have it you know but i don't know how many people actually are playing cassettes (laughs) Yeah, nostalgia anyway, just to have a. It's it's, it's cool. Tape. I have all those old cassette tapes, but I'm scared to put it in my tape deck because it's kind of old. or something. Tapes are kind of old. I'm it's sending them to Dom so he can transfer them. You know, I, we yeah. One shot out of them. You know. So then, so Dom, since this was uh, you know one of the uh, records that would uh, drag you out of retirement, um, what was your like uh, relationship with uh, Cold as Life like way back? Like when you first discovered them, you know, just seeing them, whether it was live or just hearing the album. Uh... I mean, it was mythical. I was a kid from Toronto, Canada, you know what I mean? Which wasn't a very scary place to grow up. 
and uh you know it's, it's like anything else you just like get lost in the world like you know you get my my generation of people were really into reading the lyrics and just you know listening to the record and just taking in the whole vibe of the band and what it's about you know and it was just such a grim and bleak and scary record but like you know it was like it had a really harsh vibe to it too so it just it kind of like satisfied on a lot of different levels and uh I was lucky to see them a bunch of times in Detroit and Windsor and even in Toronto later on towards the end of the that first run when Declination was out and uh it was always amazing you know what I mean it was just awesome it was just like the most legit terrifying prison riot dudes in the audience you know it was just like intimidating on all levels but like not for the wrong reason you know what I mean if you were cool there's, there's there wasn't going to be a problem but like if you're a dickhead then there was going to be some sort of problem and uh it was just cool you know it was, it was definitely uh it just rules you know separating the men from the boys right <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah so so you said one of your bands had play, played with them way back in the day what year was that when uh i think it was day of morning we played with uh cold of life in windsor in windsor canada i'm not sure how many times you guys came over i think it might have been once or twice that you even crossed the border to play in windsor I remember it being a big deal. I got denied most of the yeah. time, but yeah, it over once or twice. Yeah. I remember it being a huge deal. Like back then, and not just for Cold as Life, it was for a lot of bands. It was a huge deal. Like it was a crap. You didn't know if they were even going to get over the border. Yeah. So it was always like a crap shoot. There's like I have so many flyers for shows that didn't actually happen, or the, you know, a totally remember different show happened. Know, the show was amazing over there, though. Yeah, and then I remember you guys came over with Hatebreed and, and did a run of shows. And um, Fuck, that'd be a set to see, man. What year was that? You think that would have been around when you were touring Declination, and uh, they were on uh, that endless, endless run. Of, that's when they were like just touring endlessly. I felt like it, I, it's such a blur. The Hatebreed hey timeline, when I think about it in my head, obviously it's like towards when Perseverance came out, but maybe I'm not. I can't remember Perseverance had come out yet. I want to say it was before because I remember there was that three song demo floating around that had like three songs for Perseverance. But they were still touring hard on Satisfaction. And I just remember, I definitely remember that, that that tour coming through. It was, I remember Ottawa, though. I don't remember, I'm not, I remember Cold as Life playing Toronto, but not with, not with Hatebreed. Maybe, I don't know. Seems like I said, so many different versions of the same show happened where only some bands came and then a different time, the other bands. It, it was such a blur, but. Uh, hey, hey, Dom, it's all a blur, ain't it? Yeah. Oh, it, it only gets worse, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's all before my time. Like uh, when I was telling you, Dom, I've never, I've never had the luxury to see a cold as life with uh, Jeff on the front, man. So you, know, you got to see some shit that a lot of people in just a few years younger didn't get to see. I mean, it was definitely cool, but like there's people I've seen way more cooler shit than I have. So it's <laughs> like, you know, I'm only like one notch on that, on that timeline, you know, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate enough, like I said, to get to see, have seen it and, and uh, see a lot of stuff. The flip Who's side, though, is that I'm old. Last of this many, like, segments of it all, you know? Yeah, man. Because it's kind of weird, like, you know, especially you get into the older years now, and then, you know, you see, oh, yeah, well, my dad, you know, turned me out of you, you know? Yeah. Back in the day. <laughs> Isn't like, that the worst? It's just like. Uh, and it's like, oh, shit, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I always wondered what it was like, like, at, like a, a Canadian hardcore show, you know, because you hear Canadians are so nice and this and that, you know, what's the difference between a, a Canadian show, say a Toronto and a Detroit show? Like, oh, I could compare. Go, cool. I went, uh, I never got to see Cold as Life in Detroit, but I was at that infamous show at St. Andrews where, where Madball played with Earth Crisis and uh, that huge, and Hatebreed, I think, I can't remember if they played, but it was definitely Madball and Earth Crisis were on that show, and there was that huge, huge fight that broke out, and all the bouncers had locked themselves in the office, like the, the security office. It was that was my introduction <laughs> to Detroit hardcore. That was me just being like, the bouncers <laughs> ran away, you know, because yeah, in Toronto, you know, you get people that like danced or whatever. It was like it was cool, but it wasn't like you know, it wasn't a threatening environment the way right. it was to go to like a, a cold city like that and just like literally see the security staff run for their lives in a pretty <laughs> reputable venue it wasn't like a little like squat you know it was like a pretty reputable club that bigger bands play so that definitely left an impression on me and i was like jesus <laughs> but you know it's like you know like it was like anything else I, I, I had the luxury of seeing a lot of the scenes around the world 
and you know, it was just, Canada was just your average. It was it was cool, you know. What I mean, it was, it was just like anywhere else, really. There was no real standout quality about it. It was just people that liked the music and that were happy to be there, you know. For sure, yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, so what made you go from out Canada to the United States? Where were you always like a dual a citizen, or did you just happen? No, move? what ended up happening was uh, Dave Morning, the band that uh, did play that show with Cold as Life in Windsor broke up on the eve of doing a full North American tour. And I was pissed off. I had this job. I worked for a department of public works, filling potholes. We just drive around and fill potholes all day. And I was like, just pissed dude. And uh, Rick Healy that uh, was in 25 to life and coming correct at the time back as this would have been like 2000, 2001, they needed someone to go to Europe for a tour. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going on this North Am tour. Why not? You know what I mean? So I was like, I'll do it. And I just, you know, took a Greyhound to Baltimore with like $300 and a guitar and just like a backpack full of clothes. And that's all I had. And I never looked back, man. It was like a 20, 23 hour, 24 hour bus ride with all the stops. And I just got off that bus and did that tour. And then just kind of started doing my own bands from there and just started just building shit. You know what I mean? I didn't want to go back. I liked it here. Yeah. <clears throat> I've never been to Baltimore, but it seems like a fun place. Good scene too, man. You know? Like yeah. Yeah, pretty, definitely. Pretty hardcore out in Baltimore. It used to be a. It, it used to be it's pretty like grim. Detroit, it's, it's, not, it's a lot like a Detroit. Roy, you and I have talked about it on the phone. Where yeah, it used to be a lot like Detroit, but it's definitely uh, seen a lot more gentrification. It's like a. Yeah, they got big, helicopters. Listen, be flying everywhere. Like if you're having like a bonfire, it'll place. be like over your head. You know. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> that was yeah. about five years ago. So. Hey, what band did Zach Oler play in from Baltimore? strong intentions probably yes yes yep. man yeah that's good dude right there man yeah, i remember he was probably responsible for bringing you guys out here a lot oh yeah 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 he did a lot of really pivotal shows in the 90s that was before yeah, i moved here right always, i was aware of them very generous to us he, he brought, brought us out there. a few times that's cool yeah for sure <clears throat> so um so what's next on your agenda with uh since you got a cold as life in your grips, you putting out anything else or just it, right now, that's all we're focusing on. We're just working together on uh, just keep playing catch up. You know what I mean? We want to make sure all the records get the white glove and uh, everything gets handled as, you know, it comes out as good as possible. And with COVID dude, shit takes so long. Everything is like, I used to, at one time, my record, no pun intended record, <laughs> but, uh, I think I did 30 records in a year by myself. Like I used to run the label, you know, it's always just been me. And sometimes I get a buddy to help mail records and stuff like that. And so one year I cranked out 30 releases on my own. Just like it was the most insane year. And now I'm like, with how slow everything takes to get a response and how long it takes to get records, I don't see it being possible to put out more than like two or three records a year tops. So for the next while, it's going to be, just be like, uh, you know, Borderland Hard, then Declination, then the demos. And, you know, just see where it goes from there. Kind of just, I'm enjoying that I'm not in a rush. That no one's in a, no one needs records for tour because there's no tour. It's just everything's chill. You know, it's all right. Yeah, and then lots of time to you just focus on whatever you're doing at home. And I did have PTSD. I sent you guys a text. I'm not sure if you got it, but uh, I had all the merch for the for the t-shirt pre-orders. Yeah. When, when does the tour start? Yeah. <laughs> I got the anxiety from the day before where you're not packed up and all that shit's laid out. I'm just like, yeah, I saw it. Yeah, it looks yeah. good, man. That's hilarious. I know I got me an order, though, man. I jumped right on that shit as soon as oh. you said, go. No, just got awesome. It. Yeah, they came out really, really nice. One thing I yeah, noticed. Sorry, uh, man. That's what I got. But, a cool different from the original is that uh they, they, the ink is really vibrant and colorful, but it's a lot thinner. So it's uh the shirt doesn't weigh like a million pounds when you wear it. It's very light. It's pretty cool. But it's still, still got like the full, full color. Good. But man, enough about me. Let's talk to these guys, dude. I want, I'm here to listen. Oh, yeah. Just, well, when we talked a little bit of history so far, we, you know, we just saw you discussed, you know, how they met and shit like that. Uh, a few of the shows and you know, went on from there and we got you um just wondering uh <clears throat> i don't mean you guys got any good memories of uh what's your favorite show st andrews you have how many times you guys played at st andrews i know that was a hot spot i i would say it was uh jay buck memorial show oh, we had we had show. a friend that was yeah. kicked to death in uh, atlanta as well. and uh he was a young kid he was a professional skateboarder 
and he was killed in Atlanta and we did a benefit show for him at St. Andrews Hall with, with nothing but Detroit bands. And that was, that was a good time. Yeah, man. Bad, you know, tragic, you know what I mean? But Same with the Steve Crash show as well. Yeah. Yeah. That was a huge one as he well. Was sh- Fucking murdered outside Harpo, right? That guy, yeah, yeah. Yes. carjacked after a show or something like yeah. that. After yeah. a Motorhead and Speedball show, yeah. what it was? Yeah, yeah, I just remember hearing about it. I'm yeah, that was a great it. band. That's that's like one of the bands that I don't think got the recognition of what they were. It was the Feisties? And there that I think a lot of big bands that are out there kind of stole some of the shit from them, you know. So. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, the guitar neck's only this long, man. Every yeah. every song ever fucking written is in a in a in an area about yeah. two foot long. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey, best form of flatter or uh, yeah, best form of flattery is plagiarism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. That's fucking true. Shit. But no, great band, great guys too. Did you ever play Harpos? You, you play know, Harpos? Yeah, you ever play Harpos? I don't think plays, Carl Lewis Life you know. has ever played Harpos, no. Well, that's a bigger capacity, but every time like Hatebreed came through, like that seemed like that was one of their favorite spots was to I play. That bar, dude. And fucking Harpos. Yeah, plays... Because of that Steve Crash thing. Oh, it's well, so not that. I mean that bar is such hey, a shit I got a good dude. Harpo story, yeah. man. It was you me and you were there. We were what we, Slayer was playing and we were on stage hanging out while they were playing, and you were you were like, watch this. And you try to do a stage dive, right? Well, the, the bar- barricade's fucking 12 feet from the stage. And he landed teetering. And the, everybody knows the Harpo staff are fucking oh, yeah, brutal. Yeah, even that, brutal. Yeah. They'll beat the this, shit. And they have, fucking they ten have, on one they have scalps <laughs> on the door where they open the doors with people's heads. They're brutal there. That was right before we went to Europe. Yeah. That was, yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember well, this, that. this motherfucker yeah. tries to do a stage dive and teeters on the barricade. So I'm in the crowd yanking them trying to get them safe and the bouncers were, were it's a tug of war they want to kill him and i want to save him we'll get him <laughs> in the crowd and he ducks down and he pulls out a lighter out of his pocket he's like watch this <laughs> it's just a little fucking lighter and he whips it and it fucking cracks this bouncer right in the fucking <laughs> nose bridge his nose and splits his face that, yeah. And they had this little code they did with flashlights on the ceiling. So he's hitting them. Oh. And all of a sudden, there's fucking 40 off-duty cops. They're, they're all off-duty yeah. cops and thugs. I was in the gangster. middle of like 20 people wanting to kill me, dude. Yeah, Put yeah. it that way. <laughs> I got out of it with like a broken collarbone. We got to yeah. go to Europe in like the next week. Yeah. And like, so I yeah, grabbed. I grabbed. Grab he played drums. Me, Fuck. But if they would have got me outside, man, they would have definitely they killed, killed me. you. Yeah, they would. They would I grabbed. We. Gra- I grabbed them and we ducked down yeah. and we fucking on our hands and knees <laughs> did the fucking worm through the crowd yeah. and got away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. The uh, first time I was ever at Harpo's, like I was probably like sixteen or seventeen. It was a uh, hate breed and agnostic front played as one of the. Well, hate breed was bigger. Like I said, uh, the, the perseverance is already out and shit. But that's the first time like I was ever like sort of nervous about parking like in a parking lot which is everybody harassing you outside well, that's the place they rob you. Well, that's, that's where they rob they, you they, they know have... you can't go in there with no weapons so they know you're unarmed and they'll just come up and fuck you up that neighborhood has nothing to fuck around with scary, still man. to the day dude. That neighborhood Harper, the well, they work they work with people in the parking lot yeah, so they, they they park you and then they fucking have guys shoot in and rob you yeah yeah that's actually how i steal your cars yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's the first time his wife had her start car stolen there. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, I got sure. almost choked out <clears throat> at Harpo's. My brother, my older brother, he did like 30 years in prison. He was out one of them odd times he was out. And uh, we were drinking. They had like quarter pitcher night. He was like, you could spend a dollar and have four pitchers of beer in you. And he was whipping them from 100 yards away at the stage. <laughs> And I thought it looked fun. And I went to go whip one. And all of a sudden, I'm on my tippy toes. And this bouncer has got me in a, a fucking chokehold. And I can't do anything. Because this guy's arms this fucking big around. <laughs> I'm doing everything I can. And it's everything's going dark. And right before I hit the door, I wake up on the ground. Outside? The, doors, the, door, yeah, outside. the <laughs> yeah. doors are shut. Thank God I still have my scalp. Put it this way. Anytime you go to Harpo's, look out for a bad time. It's always going to happen. Yeah. There ain't never been a time there where nothing fucked up ain't happened. Yeah, it's still like, well, still to this day, like you can go to any smaller venue and you know you can't smoke inside. But like I said last time, uh, Hatebreed played at Harpo's. Uh, 2019 was with uh, Cro-Mags and Terror and uh, fucking Obituary Man. But it's like it's still like 1992 in there. Everyone's just fucking smoking weed and fighting and just acting crazy. <laughs> like, 
it's a good time there. <laughs> you know, if you want to get in some trouble, <clears throat> you just got to walk into Harpo's, yeah, you know? It's, uh, you better come stack with some people, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then you go down to the main floor because it can fit, you know, what, four or 500 people on the main floor. Then there's like a little balcony there and it's... I think they could put two probably five thousand in the whole building. Probably. Yeah, yeah, but that main floor, and it's like eight feet from the stage, so so they don't even allow stage diving. But when people fucking get up there, man, like you're risking your breaking your neck or something, and people love to do it. He did. <laughs> yeah. At Harbo's, man. No, at St. Andrews, I stage dive off the balcony. At the balcony there. Oh yeah, I've seen that so many times. Hey, that Rat Bones pit wear shirt, that new shirt that he's got out. Of that uh, skeleton stick yeah, figure jumping yeah. up that's based off that St. Andrews Hall. He used to dump off the balcony. Yeah, there is uh, actually was, a yeah, picture of him doing it. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. hilarious. That real. That's based yeah. off of a, a, a real. Well, he used to sneak himself in there because he wasn't allowed in any bar ever, right? So, like, he would come up in wigs and shit like that. And they would know, no, you're not getting in here, Rappos. Hey, gorilla everywhere. suits. So they'd have like <laughs> bed sheets tied or tablecloths, whatever to grab, and they'd get them up in the St. Andrews window up at the top floor, you know. Then yeah. they come running down. Yeah. I'll just see him kick him out. Yeah, we used to tie sheets yeah, together and just, pull yeah. him up through the fucking window just so he could see fucking Gorilla Biscuit. Yeah. Or just so he could see fucking Chromax. He'd come in disguises too. It was funny. Yeah. He wore gorilla suits, <laughs> full on fucking gorilla suits to hardcore yeah. shows just because so he could get in. <laughs> yeah, his awesome. face was I love could be seen. Yeah. Good He's dude. one of a kind, man. There ain't nobody like that guy ever. Yeah. I, yeah. st- I still talk to him. So no, I, I've talked to him not too long ago. I don't know. I changed my phone number. So. A bit of a conversation with him, man. You know, I seen him on that little uh, Cold as Life, you know, like three, four minute fucking trailer they had that one time. They were doing that documentary of him uh, mentioning uh, uh, Ron Beauty. I must have did something to somebody. He said his jaw was hanging off his face. <laughs> Just like, you know, when you go back to like. Well, him and Rebel Lowe's were friends for a while, you know, and they were, you know, they were both nutty. You know what I mean? I'm, you know. And to live together. It's crazy that Rap owns is like, I mean, he was a nutty bastard, that guy. <laughs> yeah, but that's cool. You know, he's got his kid now and like, you know, he's I love Rap owns. Yeah. Well, when he's on Instagram, he's, he's always awesome. uh, was selling like merch and stuff. You know, he always has some yeah. he's got his some own random little, shit, a little, little distro. Little, yeah, he's, he's got got always his own doing thing something, man. Good. Always. Yeah, well, you know, keeping it he's a survivor, man. That guy could survive through anything. He could survive through a nuclear war, I think. Well, I mean, living in New York, so seriously, still no. living there. Well, man. they don't call him rap bones for a reason, bro. That guy can literally like live like like nobody else. Damn, he's awesome. I give him credit for that. Yeah, I'm talking about about Hate Inc. Man, uh, the only I've seen Hate Inc. quite a few times, and I'd tell a story about that's not the only band that. I've ever seen live where the singer punched me in the head. <laughs> the bees like, you the yeah, head. yeah, yeah, yeah. Man is moshing at the uh, the uh, the uh, well, twenty five hundred club. You know, you played there quite a few times. Twenty five hundred club. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, Daddy used to. Uh, right time, man. Boy, guy. Yeah. Rest in peace. <laughs> I must have just got you too close to him. I was a little excited to see you guys, oh, and so like, oh, too close as fuck. All those rings, you know, how the, <laughs> those guys got the rings on their hands, man. <laughs> Yeah, Tom's, I don't know, he's one of my best friends too, man. Doing good? Yeah, you know, he's good. awesome, yeah. man. Yeah, he's yeah. doing great, dude. I mean, yeah. I hate Inc. You know, hell of a you know, he's, a, he's a genius when it comes to all that shit, right, and all that stuff. He's so whacked out that it's, like, almost crazy, you know? And yeah, some of the lyrics are fucking pretty I guess intense. I must be a little crazy, too, in order to get it, so in order to play the drums to it, so. Yeah. Or him to play the guitar to it. Yeah. You know, were you writing the riffs from, like, the beginning of, like, Hey, Inc., or? I wrote. I think I wrote maybe one hating song on the yard. Yeah, most of that's okay. all time. Ironic. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> we just had, to, just had Tom, to match it. Tom's a director. He likes to tell you exactly how he's got it in his head. So, and he does a good job of it. And yeah, I mean, that Clockwork Magic, all those albums, fucking amazing albums. Yeah. Right? But, you know, Return of the World of little thing to it, but you know, they're all good. Regardless of the lineup. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I mean, there's been quite a few, and uh, last time I think I seen them was at 2500 Club with Hoods played. I don't know if you guys were even in, in the band at the time. I don't know, this is still like, 2000, like 2006, probably. Oh. Yeah, Um, played with fucking Mikey Hood. I want to talk to him, too, man. You guys have a relationship with him? Yeah, I talk Mikey. to Mike. Yeah, yeah, he's a good guy. I've seen, yeah, yeah. 
you guys played play the modern exchange with him uh remember that place that was it's in the middle of like a suburb like a white suburb dom this place called the modern exchange in southgate michigan like like it's on a main road but it's nothing but like uh like three like three bedroom ranches nearby and just like the shit that used to go down there like in the parking lot just just chaos <laughs> yeah, that was a weird place it wasn't the owner would just so he would walk around it was with a like cool a place i got the whole concept of it all they, they had it all hooked up there pretty badass yeah. i would agree you know and, and, and everybody that owned the place or whoever it was they were all cool too but yeah and he was just yeah. so like insecure of something happening he would walk around with like a fire hydrant like full of mace it was like an 18 inch fucking thing with a big hose and i don't know how many times he let that thing go just to clear it out like so whether it's like a tyrant scent or, or a tyrant set we had some crazy it. bands come through there though. They had uh, um, what was it thirteen? Uh, bad luck. Bad luck. Thirteen, 13 came through and there. The riot and the riot. I mean, you had some crazy shit going on there. There were people like throwing, literally, like a guy dumped a bucket of like chains and axes and knives and whatever the fuck it was. You're literally out on the middle of the floor before the show started. Yeah. And, like started going crazy. Like people picking up this shit. And, oh yeah. Swing it around. And I was like, what yeah, the like fuck? uh. They have a fluorescent light hurt? bulbs. You ever seen them, Dom? I'm okay. sure you've been to a bad luck show. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. worried about people like, damn, somebody's going to get hurt at this show. You know, you do something like it, that. It is the stuff of urban legend around here. But I, I had seen them, and uh, it was one of the more timid shows where uh, it didn't quite live up to stuff I've seen on the internet or heard about. But uh, I have I have seen them, and I'm familiar with the records, but I've only heard about, like, Listen, yeah, man, this guy yeah. was hanging from meat hooks and shit. They were swinging this fucking guy around. He was, he was like, meat hooked in his back and his legs and shit. And they were swinging around the fucking circle in the fucking pit, dude. Like they yeah, they were. Uh, there was a band show going on, dude. We had a band in Canada called Haymaker that uh, had a pretty rowdy thing like that. And uh, hardcore, real, like, raw. And it, it's cool. It's cool stuff. And, like, their shows were definitely pretty wild. Yeah. The only... A good, the good show stories I have is a, is tyrant. You know, seeing them live, they used to have a game of where they throw out a, they throw out a football like a tennis ball, and they call it murder ball. And uh, during one of their last songs, they would say, whoever ends up with this ball at the end of the song, gets a free shirt and a CD. You know, like of your choice. And it was like just all out war, like just to get your hands on a Nerf ball at the end of the song. And people would be like jumping off the stage and just. You know, it's like elbows and pushing you and slamming into you, and and you know there's so many times just blood and you know ears ripped off and just just for a t-shirt, man. So just go. That, to band, that band Haymaker I mentioned uh, until 2011, I think the stretch might have been from 2005 to 11. None of their shows went past three minutes before it got shut down. That was like their thing. It would just literally be like rip out. Hell rip yeah. out the fluorescent lights they rip didn't out get everything paid and like you know they're probably going on the next tour that's great yeah awesome my kind of show <laughs> yeah but uh, i think i was the first person to get them to play a full set or no we played one of my bands pulling teeth played a show with them where they actually finally played a full set and then it became more commonplace people actually got to hear the songs and not worry about traveling across the country to watch a band play for like a minute and a half before things get <laughs> shut down you know yeah, that's always an interesting thing. Like we know bands coming, you know, to town and you know, the reputation is is how fast can it be shut down, you know? Like uh <clears throat> well, that sucks though. I mean, I yeah. mean because generally we want to play, man. Hell we yeah. practice hard, we yeah. work hard, all this. Yeah, then you're you know, touring like, and then you can't play. You know, you know that sucks that you, you know, and that was all fun and games back then, you know, but still at the end of the day, you need to get paid to move out of the next show. And, <laughs> yeah, you know, when shit breaks up, hotel. believe me, your ass ain't getting paid shit, dude. Then you're knuckle to the next show and your fucking motor might blow out and then you'll be stuck in Scranton, Pennsylvania somewhere fucking <laughs> retarded and then you can't get the fuck out and then you know yeah you're selling t shirts on the side of the road. Fuck any fun uh breakdown stories or anything on tour with Cold as Life? You guys ever get stuck in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania? That's it. <laughs> you know you missed the story. You said where you uh, <clears throat> were coming from, tour from New York, or just yeah, going along we were just on a tour, and the van broke down, and shit. We were stuck at this kid named Stacy's house, which was a guy. And... <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it was pretty crazy, dude. You know, it was Bob and Dad. Johnny's drinking coffee with them, and like, like was banging at the neighbor's door because we left them in the van. It was, it was 
some cool stuff. Yeah, we're stuck there for a few days with a blown head gasket. Remember that, Joe? Yeah, the, yeah. That van. We toured miles in this van, and and we had no money, man. We were literally broke. We 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 the show we played the night before probably in front of three people, you know, or some shit. That's a treat, though. It was yeah. Wagon. yeah, it was terrible, but we made it out. Yeah, and yeah, we definitely had to sell T-shirts. So we were just walking down the street, and all these uh. Mexican people, we didn't even know what the hell they were saying, but they were working on this badass hot rod down the street. We're like, hey, man, can you fix our car? We'll give you t shirts. And, you know, <laughs> we raised, you know, like 20 bucks or something. I don't know, 100 bucks. And yeah, we got home. They fixed that shit. They had that whole van tour apart. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> shit. One thing I wanted to go back to is you guys, when you first went on tour or whatever, when you left the state and you went to like a a New York City for the first time and like playing CBGB said it was one of your favorite show of all time, oh, if not absolutely. the best. Oh, like, the uh, best who'd you guys play with? Do you remember? Uh, Just, uh, Agnostic Front, Warzone, Demise, Demise, Madball, Madball. and uh, uh, Rejuvenate. Yep. Uh, I think that was it. Dude. Me either. What the fuck? Yeah, it's something, it's not, it was a good yeah, it, it was the best show ever. It was packed, elbow, yeah. assed elbow. And yeah, there was 300 people waiting to get in. So how do you think Freddie was at that time? Freddie he Madball, he just like a just a young teenager. Okay. Madball is already barely a teenager, man. <laughs> but lucky him. I mean, you know, growing up, you know, hard. He but... hated it. He fucking hated that shit. He used to get yeah. mad at Roger and all his friends. All he wanted to do was play video games. They call him Madball because the fucking kid was bouncing off all the walls. Yeah, he it's hated all of us. There's one thing I never knew is why is Madball called fucking Madball? Yeah, because he bounced off the fucking walls all the time. <laughs> yeah. That's what Vinny told us all the time. <laughs> oh, he was going crazy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't yeah, I'm excited, man. We got some good footage of, like, that. I was supposed to send it to Vinny a few times, man. I never did. I, you know, I don't know. And I'm sorry, Vinny. But, yeah, we got some good fit, footage of uh, when they took us out, you know? Down there where Vinny lived, and you live in the uh, yeah. Lower East Side. Yeah, and, little Italy. You know, we had uh, pictures of his boy up on the roof with flying naked kites of girls, and he was <laughs> all he had his pigeon coop and shit. We went over there and like met all the pigeons, and yeah, that's all on video. About, that he was about yeah, eighty and, years old. Man. Yeah, he was doing his yeah, barbecue on his, his name was Polly, I think. We're, yeah, yeah. Polly pigeon. Yeah, that's where we're, we're yeah, doing his barbecue Polly, on this yeah. roof, drinking beer. All kinds of people are there. It's like. 40 of us, man, maybe 30 of us. Uh, and uh, this old cat in the neighboring high rise is flying a kite, getting it over to us, feeding it over to us. Right. And he's got like centerfolds like taped to this fucking <laughs> yeah, kite. Awesome. Oh, fuck. He flies it <laughs> over to us and we get it close enough to see it. And we're like, ah. And look, he's he's over there on another roof waving at us, yeah, flying pigeons cool. around the yeah, city. Yeah, and then Betty took us over there. He took us through all the uh, the monasteries and things that was going on over there. And yeah, Vinny was the king. That like he'd walk through the neighborhood. He was he was the man. Yes, yeah. he's, he's so cool. Yeah, awesome. I mean, even now, last time yeah. uh, they were here, he's fucking just as crazy as ever. You know, but I I couldn't imagine it back. You know, I mean, that guy's like late what, 80s, 15 years, 20 years older than we are. Like, that guy's like still godfather of hardcore, right? That, he looks better than we do. Him, he's, he's a good looking guy, yeah, he's older <laughs> than us, but I wouldn't put 20 years on him. <laughs> no, here. I don't want to, I don't want to overestimate it, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's definitely older, but no, but he's the man, he's a good guy. Yeah, yeah, he's I mean, the best. And they would have been here fucking three, four times by now. It's the last time they were here, like September of 2019. They came with a uh, prong, it was the uh. Victim in Pain uh, anniversary tour, and I missed it. Yeah, yeah, it was in September of 2019. So like just before all the shit happened. 2019. Well, it seems like a long time ago, doesn't it, Dumb? 2019, like it's definitely uh, last show, like a lifetime ago. I remember seeing Madball on Set It Off tour, and uh, that's how I discovered them. I had gone to see bands because I'd seen Biohazard and there's a couple of bands that opened for Biohazard were playing in Toronto and I went to go check it out and this band Madball was playing that I didn't know anything about. I came from the metal world. So it was like, you know, that was kind of like my induction. And you gotta imagine what it's like to be somebody that's completely clueless to the whole like mythology and see everyone going ape shit about this dude with a mustache that's not really playing guitar, but they yell his name and he just stops in the middle of the song and waves at everybody and then like would continue. That was like some mind blowing shit. And then like, you know, to go back and do the homework and appreciate 
whoa, the whole the whole thing behind it was a whole other level. But my first impression was just like, this is the most bizarre fucking thing I can imagine seeing right now. It was cool. Definitely no. made an impression. And they were like, honestly, that's still like a top set I've seen of all time in my life was seeing Madball and like when they were touring, set it off when they were just like just super, super young and gnarly. And just such like, a high caliber. Hey, that was man, with man. Willie Shepler on drums. Oh, yeah. One of my favorite hardcore drummers yeah. ever. Line, that line, that Madball lineup was top notch. Hey, that, that AF lineup was top notch. Yes. My voice and all that other yeah. shit. Yeah. yeah. That's I mean, when they, they, I, I one top notch voice. musicians right there. Dude. That's when yeah. AF released yeah. that one voice record, yeah. man. And yeah. that fucking musicianship on those records were great, man. Uh, Will Shepler and Matt Henderson was just such a lethal combo, dude. They were just they, excellent they, together, you know. Yeah, really great guys. I still guys talk too. to Maddie every now and then. Hey, uh, Dom, I got a. Uh, I'm. We're not going to do it now, but I got a story about stigma with the whole. I, I'll tell oh, you. Oh, nice. Remind, <laughs> me, remind me, dude, because I got to. I will. <laughs> no, I saw the school last time I seen him. I was. I had my phone. I was recording him like a dork, and he just waved right to me. Did a little pose, Vinny. Hey, <laughs> so I just going. remember being the extra weird. Me and Jeff got together when we were kids. Like, wouldn't it be great to jam with AF one day, dude? And like, we got to jam with AF. That's and fucking it was, great. It's amazing, you know, because they were our idols. You know, they have negative approach. Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the good ones. Warzone, of course. You know, yeah. Bad brains. All hey, you remember brains. when Rabies? Uh, we we played at the stick, and we you know we took everybody to the train station. They're like, "Fuck no, uh, we're not going." Fuck no, we're not going. It's already closed. I'm assuming, yeah. Listen, man, we, we would take, <laughs> oh, we would, yeah, we would have bands come, come, and we told like, them yeah, our club we got, we got this big, we got <laughs> oh this my big God. Guy. <laughs> Just bring it back. Just bring a backpack, a sleeping bag. You're, uh. you're straight. Come with us. <laughs> and then we bring them to the fucking abandoned train station. But they are, they were hip. They're like, fuck no, we're not coming. Yeah. He's like 25 stories, oh, Dom. Old ass train station where you can't even go like into the basement because it's let's just flood it out and then you go up and it's like the rickety scariest stairs. I don't these maniacs. I went there and went up two floors when I was like 17 and said, No, I'm not going up. They're playing on the roof, the I'm sure. On the roof there every year. It was beautiful, man. Right I got my collar room. broke by the cops yeah. there. He's probably one, yeah. one night. You guys got a cop fucking that, smashed me with a flashlight and yeah. the collarbone and broke it. We took all those photos down there. All those photos are going to be on the album and all that shit down there at that train station. Okay. So. Is there a photo on the internet of that one where everyone's standing like up on the dock? Yeah, all the, everybody with the yeah, pimples and all yeah, that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. infamous photo. Absolutely. Yeah, the big old, I like, think it's like, one of the coolest like, Still shaved head. How photos was, ever. It was awesome. What year was that? I, I, <laughs> I don't man. Well, there's like 50 pictures no, on the was, internet uh, and I've seen them all a thousand was, like, times. Like, that's all I know. Six, I would say. Bob El Rob Alford? Yeah, 95, 96. Yep, 97 maybe. Right around there. I was 10 years old, so, <laughs> you know, I was just listening to fucking... I don't even know what I was listening to. No, he to. took some great photos, though. So, so what I find that's cool, though, is that at some point during the coldest life era, Jay Navarro from the Suicide Machines was in the band, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you got on the guitar or bl the bass? bass? Yeah. Bass. Yeah. I love that band. That's one of one of the first like punk bands I never even I never e even knew from Detroit before I knew what hardcore was. So, you know, that band to me is he's something special and I'm yeah, gonna talk did, to him eventually. Short run, but yeah, he was part of it. Yeah. So how many members do you think has been in the band all together? Do you have any count? <laughs> That's a silly question. <laughs> well well, uh, well that can be a debate. Who had more members? Uh integrity or Cold as life because I know a lot of people have been in that band. I, I think Integrity might have you guys licked, but uh, <laughs> it's a it's a long list. But I mean, it's just how yeah, that's the nature of the beast, going, man. I mean, obviously for this many years, I mean, it, it's hard to you know mm -hmm. you're gonna go through all those members, you know, and don't think all the bigger bands ain't with all these fucking members too, dude. You know, it's oh, hard yeah. to get it all figured out. It's hard to you know compromise with everybody and and you got to remember too, tough business, man. You know? Same five guys are going to make the same record. Over, you got to have new people yeah. come and go. Otherwise, it's going to be the same thing. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, I, I like, I'm okay with change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I know the that I just, record. I just but appreciate then again, it, you know? you know, at the end of the day, right is right. You know, and wrong is wrong. And, you know, like a lot of things have been done wrong. And, you know, and things are getting ready to be done right. So, you know, and you can see that just how they're happening because things are happening right, right now. And, you know, me and Jeff are meant to be together. And me and Jeff are meant to do this. And we're, we're, we're meant to cement our legacy into all this shit because we fucking did all this fucking legacy and all this shit, you know? And we deserve this.
Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I thank you, Dom, for fucking coming through on all this and, and making all this happen too. You know, dude, a honor and a privilege, honest, man. You know, yeah. and it, you know, to hear Coldest Life on vinyl, that, that's been my only like wish for a long time, man. <laughs> it, it sounds great, and I'm totally stoked. And, I liked uh, how you kept sliding it into your your Christmas pictures in the background. I saw on the Instagram where it was just like oh, yeah. casually under the tree or <laughs> casually like on the mantle. It was a nice yeah. touch. Well, I got to donate one of them, you know, to, to my buddy Crafty's, uh, you know, son. He's going through some hard shit. And... Yeah, that was incredible. Yeah. And yeah, it was great, man. Yeah. Everything worked out great there. And it was good to offer that. But uh, yeah, I can't wait till the whole thing comes out, though. I'm excited. Okay, now that I got now I got you guys both cornered, me and this dude Gabriel, the guy who won the test press, actually. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, we're on a me. on a bender trying to sort out the coldest life demo timeline. Do you guys remember all the demos as far as when they came out and what was what? Because it is such a poor yeah, Jeff. I see yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm just trying to like, uh, I'm that's why to pull I brought it all together for you. I, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to pull things out of the attic. I've moved like, like three times in the last year or two. So like my shit's scattered everywhere and I'm trying to get it all back together now. And no, it's cool. But he, he was definitely, uh, vehement about this one demo being a bootleg. The one that had Jay Navarro on. Was Jay Navarro ever on one of the demos? Is that it's a legit possible. demo that he played on? It's possible. possible. You know, it's possible. I, we don't even know, dude. We, I mean, we I all could, have, I could stuff, ask him, you know, but so. he would know better than me. <laughs> I only know of one comment that were being made, and it was on YouTube. Somebody said that he was in the band at the time. I think when you were on guitar and singing along with whoever else was singing, you guys were taking turns on. J-way. Yeah, on that album. I'm not exactly sure. He might it, have been. Right? In 95, maybe. Was he maybe. on guitar or bass? You have no. Uh, he was on Jay base. Was on base. Yeah, yeah. He was always on base. But yeah. dude, he he was a very very short stint. Dude, he was like maybe a show or two. Yeah. And okay. I think he stole Ron's microphone and it pissed Ron off, and Ron was like all upset about it, and and like I don't know. And and Jay came to play a show with like a Public Enemy shirt on or some <laughs> shirt. And like Ron was telling him to change his shirt, he wouldn't change his shirt. So like they had differences. Like, but it didn't last too long with Jay. But you know, Jay's cool, man. And Jay's you know, we've known him a long cool. time, man. He's yeah. a very talented guy. And you know, yeah. And his band well, um, you know, did they done and he a lot keeps of, it real, man. Successful bands, shit, you yeah. know. So yeah. All Especially props the to suicide him, man. machines. They were on the Tony Hawk Pro Skater hey, man, game. Does it get bigger than that? Don't <laughs> fuck around, you know. They had some good musicians in their band, you know. Yeah. Well shit, man. I mean, <clears throat> so we covered most of it, like we said, and now we're just looking forward to whatever's coming out with you, Dom. Uh is there is there a set date on when this is going to be, you know, available to people? I'm told, and don't hold me to this. I talked to the plant yesterday, and uh, actually, I got some real cool stuff to tell you guys about colored vinyl and stuff that we could talk about after the weekend. But uh, I mean, right, the, we have the test. The tester approved. The layouts in, and they're like, it could be anywhere between now and June before the records are out, just because of how long it takes. So you know. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm trying not to pre-order it and make it something where it's going to pre-order and people are going to be waiting six months for it and harassing me, asking me where it is, and then add the USPS mess. On. I sent these dudes their test presses like two day. And this was like my first interaction with these guys where I'm like, you know, trying to make a good impression. So I, you know, overnight these test presses to them. And it took like almost a month to get there. It was crazy. They, they, they picked them up from my house and they scanned them with delivered instead of pickup. So the tracking was just useless. And every day or two, I'm like, so did they arrive? And I just felt like a total like idiot, right? Because I'm just like, you know, <laughs> making a bad impression on this. And thankfully, they they showed up, you know. And it's just like, multiply that by like a thousand records that all those people being like, where the fuck's my record? And I'm just trying, you know, hopefully everything will just right. eat itself out by the time yeah. it's available. And uh, I like the idea of people not having to, not having to wait long before it comes out, you know. Yeah, it's probably better to wait because it seems like. You see on the news how there's like 20, 30 trucks outside the USPS, you know, uh, local spots these days where like people still haven't even got their Christmas cards and all that. So it's so wild. trying to send out you know, albums and and even merch at that. You know, that's that seems like you've got most of it. So it's got to be shipped out, huh? Yeah, I actually picked up everything. Uh, I picked up everything yesterday from the UPS station and they left two boxes off the shipment. I had to drive all the way back into the city and get those last two boxes today. And uh, 
got I got everything that we're squared away. So I'm taking a couple of days off and then uh I made some free stickers to throw in there for A389 and the Cold as Life ones. Just get people excited and you know. And once the uh the plan is once everything's licked and sealed and it's in production and there's nothing else we can do about it, then we'll start working on declination and, and the raw demos, you know what I mean? That way it's a it's a steady, yeah, it may be six months apart, but at least, you know they'll all be in the system ready to go. And like, hopefully you know. the clothing line as well, man, because that's going to do a big part of it as well. Yeah, it's going to be, yeah. it's going to be worth it. Everyone's going to be, it's going to, I'm so glad that it's being done. Yeah. Well, I mean, people all over, you know, all over the globe pretty much are, are up for it, man. They want the, they want the merch. Uh, they want the, uh, the, uh, the pressings of the demos and everything. Yeah. So, it's one of those bands where yeah, Jeff, Jeff was showing me stuff on eBay and it was just like, these shirts are going for like a hundred dollars. We should remake them and just sell them. Mm -hmm. We sold them for like a normal price. And you know, we sold like a ton of them. Like people were so excited to just be able to get, actually get one. You know what I mean? Let alone for like over a hundred dollars a pop. It's crazy. Yeah. You know, Dom, when I got out of prison uh, and we started talking, there was a few people that were wanting to do vinyl. And uh, one of the reasons I gravitated towards you and I, I talked to Roy and we came to you and decided to go with you is because you didn't want to cheapen anything further because cold as life is, you know, good or bad, you know, and ugly, all that we've, we've seen it all. And it's been cheapened over the years, but that Absolutely. was one of the reasons that we decided to go with you. And since that very first conversation, it's been nothing but stellar and yeah, i'm dude, so i appreciate be, that to be working with you man you've done nothing but everything that we wanted and needed this to be and uh it means a lot man thank you guys it's like uh i always talk that's that's you know that was always the missing link for you guys was just like just having the right team behind you of, of people like that can, I 100 percent agree. You just said it right there, hey, dude. The, and we the got team, the right team right now. And we're making this shit happen, and you see matters. how easy it's happening because we're not really hard people to work with, man. It is very easy, and it's all right there. You know what I mean? And yeah, it's just like this shit's trying to be built from something. This shit's already been there. It just needs to be really documented and really put out there in a way that it's always meant to fucking be. You know, without all the bullshit. Involved, yeah. You know, and and we're very thankful for you doing it. Thank the, you. It's yeah, my yeah. pleasure. You guys yeah. talk about you guys been that, how you guys been jamming a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We've been jamming, man. Yeah. The team matters though, and yeah, I agree with yeah. Roy, bro. And I'm I'm glad to have you in our corner, man. Dude, I love it. It's 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 the best, man. It, it, it's awesome too. Just like uh you guys are like the white whale, you know what I mean? I was just like, how the fuck did you pull that off? And it's like it just happened, dude. It just worked, you know. And thankfully, like just working with other bands, like you know, everyone from demons to integrity to i hate god to just everybody you know what i mean it's just, i've never really had a bad experience with everybody because i kind of treat everybody and everything the same way you know i want the record to be a record i would want to buy not a record that i just want to like throw uh, out there and, and cash out much, and you pretty much do that every time man so that's why thanks you know, yeah dom, it, dom literally from the people you have remastering go, go ahead and mention some of yeah. the people that this yeah we have brad right. brad boatwright who does audio siege he's probably mastered most of the popular heavy music records of the last 10 years remastered born Atlanta is hard as it sound Blah, sorry i'm starting he remastered born Atlanta hard and it sounds amazing we're able to totally go in and uh i always thought it sounded like a little uh high endy like the mix was real hot and like it, it was just real high endy so he evened it out so it's got a little more meat to it it's still got you know everything's there but it's just a little more pleasing to the ears we definitely tried to make sure you know, it's just a better experience. And then uh, Dwid from Integrity, my bandmate, um, took care of the layout and we managed to get really good, clean imagery. And uh, Jeff and Roy sent a lot of the original photography over so we were able to scan everything. Actually, uh, I have a pretty good story because a lot of people are like, a lot of people were miffed when I did the 100 Demons record that I changed the cover a little bit. But what they don't know is the picture on the 100 Demons LP is the original photo that Bruce LePage took. Like that, that cross thing, right? So I thought it'd be cool to use the original photo. I thought that was a neat twist, but they're like, nah, you should have kept that pixelated logo and, you know, 1990s Photoshop cover. I'm like, nah, dude. And there's like, well, I hope you don't do the same thing that the Coldest Life record. And dude, you're going to like this. This is a good story. But uh, I ended up, you know, 
goofing on this dude. He's a buddy of mine. And I told him the baby from the coldest life record on the cover that he's been located now in 2020 and his name's Randall. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we were going to have a thing where like we were going to get him to get in the fetal position like he is on the cover and like making like a hologram where he goes back and forth between the baby and him now. That's uh, great, we might man. have to pay that motherfucker some royalties. So hold that <laughs> out of there. Hold on. <laughs> I had him going for a minute before it sunk in. There'll be like 800 guys out there. Yeah, that's hey, me. I'm Randall. That's a good, that's a good one, Dom. No, that's fun. I like it. I, like it. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that one. That's crazy. Hey, old Randall. Hope he's doing well. Uh, so you guys been jamming? What are you jamming? Playing guitar. Playing guitar? Yeah. Hell yeah. We're just knocking the dust off, yeah, man. It's I mean, around. you know, it's been a while since me and Jazz been done anything, you know, so, you know, but the, but the communication Cases there, and you know the brain waves are there, and yeah, man, it's getting back in the field. We got Tom around, we got his crazy fine. ass, so he comes up with all the crazy shit, and you know it's going around good, dog. Good, it's we don't good know what it's gonna be, we don't know what it is, we don't know anything. It's hanging just, out, it's enjoying it's each just other. the final step of just finally getting together and doing it, you know. So yeah, that's exciting, you know, beyond, like beyond everything, you know, all the years and years of ups and downs and whatever Feels that good. you know comes full circle once again and feels good to have my friend back and you know yeah it just feels good you know and we all got our families going on and just you know we, we got a lot of good things going on for us man and we're very happy about all that yeah that's a cool thing too for my end seeing you guys be friends again and like just seeing like just everything getting set right you know what i mean seeing you guys controlling the band and other people aren't yeah just absolutely. Being the right dudes yeah, in the right place you know what i mean and I remember just posting that picture of you guys hanging out and the internet like went crazy, dude. They were just like, oh my God, they're hanging out. This is amazing, you know? And everyone was just so happy. Well, why should that be, man? We were best friends our whole lives, man. You know? well, we, were, we were beefing we were, for a long you know? time and it was public, man. Yeah. So, it, yeah. I'm, but they got a guy, you know, we've I'm, done cool shit with each other as well. You know what I mean? I mean, amazing things with each other. And it, it, it's never been right without each other. And that's what the problem is, you know? And we just kind of got off the fucking beaten path on, you know? on certain things but now we're together it's great and i feel great you know yeah, well, i love this man this man's been through a lot and i've been through a lot and you know the the whole fucking legacy's been through a lot you know what i mean well what it is so and here we are now and then and it just you know i want to pass that on to other people you know sometimes you just you know fucking swallow your pride and shut the fuck up and just do the right thing you know and this was the right thing to do, and everybody knew it, and here we are. It was great. <laughs> My man, I love you, John. Love you, bro. Yeah. Hey, man, it's good to see, you know, everybody will be happy to see it. Uh, you know, with you guys to the Detroit scene and the whole hardcore scene in general, is you played such a big role for in quite a long time. And, like, I can say along with thousands of other people that <clears throat> I don't think they would have thought this day would have came was sitting here talking shit, you know, talking about uh, re-releasing another album and, you know, just looking forward to what could possibly come next after the whole pandemic bullshit's over with. And well, something's coming. I don't know what it's going to be, yeah. but something's coming. We got some badass equipment now, dude. You guys got stacks. And, like, it's very exciting. We never had that before and <laughs> great shit. So I can't imagine what we're going to make now with the shit we got now. We but, got some bones. You know, and maybe not that, just a lot of history and just a lot of, you know, battle roots and everything you know so yeah but besides that we got some bones and some good yeah. songs already man absolutely it's it, something's got yeah. something's gonna happen i don't know what it's gonna be but something's gonna happen it's yeah. gonna be magical it's gonna be great <laughs> were you were able to put down any good lyrics while you had all that time nah, to yourself no no you were right none <laughs> Take i definitely to... thought that was gonna be it i definitely That's thought it. the lyrics were gonna be like you must have had the tons of stuff backed up from well, I wrote, I got a lot of stuff written, but listen, man, like Roy said, we're knocking the dust. I'm knocking the dust off on my guitar work, my chops, because it's, you know, I was gone for 10 years. And before that, you know, I wasn't doing nothing, you know, so it's going to take a minute, but I got some stuff written. But I mean, just from the first practice, so oh, man, it just kind of all like kind of felt natural to me, you know, for my opinion of it all. And... It did. And you know, we just we're just picking off where we left off, man. That's all. Yeah. And it's new times and it's you know, it's new years and it's you know, times are crazy as fuck, dude. And you know, like there's so much angst and this and that and the other thing in the air and you know, we just wanna bring something good to all this shit. 
you know, and just fucking make it right. And Dom's helping us make it right. And, you know, we got a lot of good people in our corner here. You guys are trying to help us make it right. And yeah, as long as everything turns out right, everything's great, right? I like to think yeah. so. You know, yeah, absolutely. Stay focused and fucking you know, do what's right, That's man. That's right. It's, enjoy a lot of people just love the band and they just want to you know they just want to see things end and on a good note you know and just get restore balance to the universe and just you know yeah well the universe is actually we're not trying to fight the universe no more it's just happening you know it's unfolding on us finally (laughs) and sometimes it takes all those sacrifices and all this and all these pains and all these sufferings and all that for that to come together so here we are yeah you know and thank god that you know Cause you know, there's lots of sleepless nights, you know, it's, it's very hard to hate people and fucking be angry at people all the fucking time, you know, it takes a lot out of a person, dude, you know? Yeah. Especially, especially when they get, get you in situations too. where you can't even get out of those either, you know? So everybody's got to learn from that shit and move on. And we're all old. And fuck man. We got grandchildren and kids <laughs> and all this shit. We ain't got time for this fucking high school bullshit of everybody else's problem with what everything else is you know and it just feels really good to uh, like you know let go of all that stuff you know through all these years and yeah a lot of people are going to come out with a good it. result of everything you know yeah fucking and things go back to being like i said we got time with us now too man he brings a whole different element to it you know and locals we're all spiritual guitar? right now we're all you know a lot more you know physically just growing up of lessons learned so it's gonna be great. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> you got anything to say? Any, uh, any any closing words? We can wrap this up, man. You know. Um. Hey, man. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. All you kids out there, do the right thing. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of trouble. <laughs> if everything, if everything matters, man. If everything matters, everything fucking matters. So you know, choose carefully and do the right thing, man. Yeah. It's a fine line between. You know, being with the people you love and doing the things you love and being in a place that you don't want to be or not being here at all. So, so it takes two choose, people from experience. Choose, all this choose carefully. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Let me, you know, we've been through it all, me and John. So, and here we are now. Yeah, just like you said, nobody would ever imagine that would ever happen. <laughs> For sure, not me. Is, you know, uh, you know and that takes things you hear. to do that and overcome everything. But not only that, it takes experience and knowing what you've lost everything before. And knowing what we had before everything happened you know yeah and that's what you put to, it's what you guys put a lot of energy made into a lot of fucking shit happen man you know and like without even knowing that we were doing it you know and here we are fucking 30 something years later and and here we are again so obviously something that was meant to be closed out and on something of it great dom anything to say any uh any news with integrity Oh, uh, we're writing a new record that's almost in the can. Uh, it takes a long time. The integrity records are, uh, well, I mean, when I joined the band, I turned it from a hardcore band into like, I don't know, it sounds goofy to call it theatrical, but it's like a meatloaf record now, dude. There's like eight minute songs with a bunch of parts. It's just real crazy, you know, but like we were talking about earlier, I don't want to hear the same record from the same band from the same five dudes. You know, I like when shit's different as long as it's cool. And, uh, I got another band going with Mike Score from All Out War that we're uh, we have a, a couple songs we're just doing a seven inch with, Talk and uh, he's the best. Yeah, and uh, my friend awesome. uh, Scott from Bloodlet and I have another band. We have like a 1983 heavy metal band. It's like Dokken and Rat and shit like that, but it sounds like Ozzy or Bobby Liebling from Pentagram is singing. It's it's pretty cool. I've wrote a ton of music over just being stuck at home with nothing to do. I would force myself to write songs every day. I'm, just, I'm, I'm like, I just write a song every day. And then after a month, I'm going to go back and listen to them and just see, you know, see what's what. And it was just so cool because all these, the idea came to start sending my buddies songs to sing on. And it just all these kind of side project bands kind of sprouted off that. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool. So aside from the coldest life and integrity, but these are all like just meant to be like, you know, little studio projects for, you know, What's the word I'm looking for for working remotely, you know? So it's never things that are going to be real bands and tours or anything like that. It's just something cool, you know? Something oh, yeah. To pass well, the time that if someone enjoys this, it's doing great, you know? Hey, Dom, save some of them chops. Dude, 
put if, put some put some in your back pocket, all right, dude. Mm-hmm. If someone if this if this shit clears up and I could fly out there, I was already telling Roy that I would come down and jam in a heartbeat. It was, Listen, it was man, sick. come on out. I got a badass hot rod. Come on, out do the there. podcast. Come, come on out in front of some cool cars. You know, yeah, I got man. some. I got some gear you can plug into. Just grab yeah. a guitar and come we got on. Plenty of amps, Sweet. that's for sure. Yeah, as soon as as, as soon as this club fly, as soon as this shit dies down, count me in. I'm definitely down. Cool, cool. Now cool. people are gonna think Coldo's life's gonna turn into meatloaf. Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> <laughs> I bring the curse. I bring the curse with me. No, I'm just kidding. I, I know I know how to keep uh, stuff in the realm of whatever band I'm playing with. You know, so it, it would definitely be fun. It would. All right. Well, <clears throat> gonna be one final question that I want to know: Would there ever be a coldest life on stage again? Is anything uh, possible? I mean, anything's possible. I mean, we are possible. what we are, you know. I mean, me and Jeff are cold as life. So, as far as I'm concerned, anything is possible. And absolutely, if people want to fucking get us out there and everybody's behind us, goddamn right, we'll get out there and fucking rock it. I think it needs to be uh, Agnostic Front, Mad Ball, Cold as Life, <laughs> Hate Breed. Yeah, get ready to spank your bucket, have a wet dude, <laughs> because, you know, that would be the most amazing thing ever. Absolutely. The hell of a show. <laughs> no, well, <clears throat> I mean, we could wrap it up here. Um, I appreciate you, Don. Dom, come, Don, I know your name's Dom. Coming on. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Dom, love you, bro. Thanks for and doing you the whole record thing. You know, without you, you know, we just have to go to YouTube and hear the one version. But now we'll, we'll be able to get it most uh, easily on the streaming services and, you know, the album. and People will be happy. It's going to be everywhere it needs to be. And it's going to look and sound amazing. And... These guys get, you know, it's, it's awesome that it's just like, uh, there's no middleman, you know what I mean? It's just me and these guys and everything's getting handled and, you know, you have to worry about money exchanging the wrong hands or it, everything's going to the band that, you know, that needs to go to the band and everything's, everything's great. You're the man, Dom. You're the man. It's going to be yeah. awesome. There's going to yep. be more stuff. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again. Hey, Yo, hey thank, you, thank you for having me. Thank you, buddy. I'll yeah, talk man. To you next couple days. Yeah, I'll call you after the weekend, man. You guys have a great weekend. You too, Thanks, buddy. You too. Right. Thanks, man. See ya. Let me just uh, pause it or fucking. <laughs>